the forge has gone quiet, the bellows blow no more. The forge has gone quiet, the smiths have gone home. Only fading embers remain, and my hearth grows cold. One kiss from you to rekindle it all. Game Master Daniel Fox, back for Queen of Embers. I'm just being loud. Right now the camera is focused on me and Mike. I don't know why. Because <laughs> the camera loves me. All right? The, cam the camera just loves me. The camera loves you. <laughs> well, it captures It's like anybody. smoke. It goes to beauty. Yeah. Oh. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. It's Another the thing? beards. It's the beards. Beardy boys. Beardy white boys. Um, so, with sad news, Walter's gone. Um, he had to step away. Busy with Journey Pro. Um, he won't be back, unfortunately. It's pretty sad. Jonathan Vander will be turned into an NPC. For now, uh, we may have a new player for the table. We'll see what happens. Uh, no decision has been made yet. We talked about it before the game session a little bit, and maybe, maybe, maybe. Maybe it will happen, maybe it won't. We don't know. We'll see. So, um, I think we should just first talk about an important change for game mechanics. Because if there's one thing we like to do around here, it's house rule. Oh, that was going to be creating new character sheets. Oh, God, no. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's my favorite. we're testing some things for Colonial Gothic. Obviously, this is a table where we do a lot of playtesting as well, development editing, fun stuff like that. Um, we play a humanocentric game, as we all know. Like, we all know this, right? Mm -hmm. Surely we all know this. Um, now that you mention it. Now that you mention it. <laughs> Wait, um, what? Um, because we play a humanocentric game, uh, and for Colonial Gothic in particular, like having ancestral modifiers or racial modifiers doesn't work really well um, for several reasons. So we are going to change some things for our game to play test for Colonial Gothic. Essentially, we're saying it is not your nature that changes your primary attributes. It's not your ancestry. It's the way in which you were raised, your upbringing, your nurture. So, you will find a number of, you will find a series of changes, both positive and negative attribute modifiers, based on your upbringing. Everybody, Mike. <laughs> uh, every time. He passed it, though. Know, right? So, uh, go ahead and pencil in your, your, your changes here. What, what we're looking at is, you have an upbringing, and that upbringing will change your primary attributes. So, if you recall, on your character folio, there's a little box. Oh, all your modifiers. Yeah. Does anyone have a spare pencil? Yes. I have like ten of them in here. Fifteen pencils. Well, you have nine more than I need. Do you have oh, nine more pencils? I know it was nice. Oh, okay. 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 So your upbringing will change your primary attribute modifiers both positively and negatively. So, as an example, Warren. What is your upbringing? Industrious. So that means you get a plus one to agility bonus, plus one to brawn bonus, plus one to willpower bonus, but suffer a minus one to fellowship bonus, minus one to intelligence bonus, and minus one to perception bonus. Mm -hmm. What is um, what is Banneker's uh, upbringing? Cultured. Cultured. <laughs> plus one fellowship, plus one intelligence, Rock. plus one perception, minus one BB, minus one CB, and minus one WB. Yikes. Yeah, a bunch of pluses, I know. Wow. Yeah, it's horrible. Hurt. I imagine, I imagine over time that these will probably evolve toward archetype. Meaning certain archetypes will have strengths and certain primary attributes and others won't. Uh, but we're going to test this for now. See how numbers work out. Ooh. See its impact. Yeah. Yeah. Plus it's going to change some things. My brawn is now a three. Yep. That's my perception. Mm -hmm. It's the same. I used to actually have a, a decent. My range on guns is might as well be melee. What's your range now? Uh, my perception bonus is three. Woo. So I believe with a gun. Um, a pez, what kind of flintlock pistol? Yeah. Uh, let's see here. I think that's. Yeah, I originally had 8, 16, 24. Mm hmm. Um, I don't. I can't, so I think it was like plus six, but yes, it's 
Uh, I'm a little Great. lost. Yeah. Yeah. Bonus one up. It's funny. I, I lost think brawn in combat, but I got. I think ours like too. <laughs> we really like you. What's it? Was it that the yeah, yeah, no, it the Saturday Night Live? It's six, twelve, and eighteen now. That's I have my a range of my pistol. Bullshit. I might as well be in melee. <laughs> Because I can just Go walk six. up to you and shoot you in the face for an extra D6. And I take photos of blast every time. I don't even attempt to raise it until the end. Well, for me it works because of, like, char in the top. Do you have leadership trained? Nope. So next question is this. Because this is potentially negatively impacting your characters, would you like to change your upbringing? I'll go with it. Nope. It makes sense for my character to be reverent. So. Yeah, it makes perfect sense for my character to be militant. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If you wish to change your upbringing, feel free to do so. I will say it's kind of difficult on the ones that are both brawn and combat for them to both drop. That is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That that's rough. That's right. Yeah. I'd have to ask Adam's permission if I wanted to be revenant though. Oh. Mm. Mm. Oh, we revenant. both got the same negatives. Opportunistic and and uh, cultured both get the same negatives. Mm. Yeah, that's rough, losing both brawn and combat. Yeah. yeah, I lost two damage. But remember, okay. change your upbringing if you like, but do so now before we start. Yeah, that's fine. What would be the worst is losing brawn and willpower. Oof. That would, oh, I guess agility goes to nothing. Yeah, minus to brawn <laughs> and willpower. <laughs> culture. Awesome. Oh man, cultures are in for bad days. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, there's a... I think there's an argument to be made yeah, here to... To kind of frame this around archetype, to because most archetypes obviously have certain leanings from a primary attribute bonus perspective, mm-hmm. um, but there is also something to be said about your nurture having, um, sure, your upbringing having an impact. I like upbringing more just because there's more diversity um, in the number of, uh, and the types of bonuses and pluses. Mm-hmm. If we just did um, archetype. Sometimes people switch archetypes mid-tier. Well, you can't switch archetypes. You never switch archetypes. Your archetype if, is what determines your... house rule it, I mean. If no. Your archetype... So just don't to, have archetypes. Cor- correct. So oh, okay, gotcha. your arch- the only thing your archetype determines, and that's why it's not on your character folio, it only determines your starting profession. It has no other impact, oh, save okay, for your gotcha, starting gotcha. trappings and starting profession. Okay. Now, if you want to move between professions, it's usually within that archetype. But if you s- switch to a new profession, you don't get that archetype. Okay. You remain the archetype is only a definition or a framework that allows you to work within a within a yeah. pro- basically it's a guide, it's a guidepost, touchstone for all professions within a certain thing, as opposed to randomly rolling between seventy two professions. Instead, you roll once for an archetype and then once for a profession. Mm-hmm. Okay. That's I why am that now over encumbered. Mm-hmm. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, I, didn't even think about that. I was yeah. right. I was right at my seven limit, and it uh, will impact I down to six. It will impact your your but primary attribute bonus. Remember, if you don't like your upbringing, you don't like the values. Change it, but change it now. It is nice that we have different bonuses. I'm gonna need you to knock my uh, initiative down by two. No, thirteen. Mm. I am with a peanut a butter of three. Now. Wait, um... Mine is 13 as well. Oh, my peanut butter still stayed. <laughs> Yours went down two? Yep. I went down one. Nice. Did everybody lose brawn? No, no. we were talking perception. Perception. I gained brawn. I gained brawn and willpower. I'll oh, take it. That's right. Are you lucky, guys? Banneker, did you go down in your, your initiative? I did. How much? One. So 12. What about uh, Elisa? What, no, what is your upbringing? Stayed. Cultured. Oh, oh, oh. Sorry, oh, everything good. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Just your combat, willpower, and brawn bonus, all the things you need to live and kill. Yeah. I feel like you could switch to Forgotten and be pretty good with your character. I feel very Forgotten anyway. There you go. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm good. I'm not going to change the character. You'll work with it. I'm very, um, I'm, I feel very cultured. <laughs> <laughs> Even more so now. I still like how you're like, guys. Anybody need a pencil? Was I that bad? <laughs> going, going, going. Am I that bad? Am I that bad? Because if I'm that bad, let me know. No, no, no. You're you're a good you're a good strip. You're one of the good ones. So let's talk about <laughs> <Good> wow. <laughs> let's talk about last game session. Alright. What happened? Well, 
<laughs> it's been a while. It's been a while. It's been a, it's been a, a week. Yeah. Thanks, Dave. Uh, let's see. Oh, we, we didn't. We didn't play. Uh, could okay, because I was like, I was like, I worked on servers. Yeah. yeah. That's, That's my story. We played Doom. <laughs> I worked on Windows 10, pushing for SCCM. Yeah. So what did we do? Oh, so last out. week, remember what? Remember where it yeah, left it off? So right in the in the caverns. After you defeated the shade, the shadow, the apparition, I got it. And then you, then what happened after that? Uh, we found a tomb. Lorin. <laughs> yeah, Lorin's tomb. <laughs> yes. Supposedly. We found a Lorin's tomb. Well, somebody and named a Lorin. We just don't know. We uh, mm-hmm. we found some writings. Some ancient writings on lead plates. Um, we talked about, like, uh, you know, I had a little bit of a philosophical discussion on, like, whether or not we should be, even be here or doing what we're doing and looking through things. Should we desecrate um, this tomb? Yeah, should we? Is it, it going to be a bad thing if we desecrate this tomb? <laughs> and, uh, so then we desecrated the, the tomb. The problem was <laughs> unintentionally. Unintentionally, we ended yeah. up desecrating it anyway. So. I mean, the gods, they. They look for intent, right? I asked, does anyone object to me blowing up the door? And nobody did. And nobody said. No. Nope. What happened when the door, you blew the hinge off the door? What happened? It, it may have shattered the glass tomb of the... Uh, Mike, may is not the word here. It, okay, it shattered. <laughs> it <Yeah>. shattered. <laughs> but only... A, but only <laughs> allegedly. 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 You broke the temple. Let's just you like, can't prove it without a court of law. <laughs> but hey, at least it wasn't super shattered. It was only shattered. Yeah. 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 Right. And the flying debris only probably destroyed many of the text. Yeah, only countless, <laughs> priceless, <laughs> historically... Lost forever. But the artifacts. door was open. But we opened that door. <laughs> the, door the door was open. In, indeed. Indeed, the door was open. <laughs> Oops. Yes, because we didn't want to desecrate the tomb further by looking for secret switches, because that could... <laughs> so after the after the oh, hinge did. blows off the door... The oh. hinge blows off the door, the tomb to Eloran shatters, his preserved corpse falls to the ground. Then we have a philosophical discussion on whether or not we should take the laurel, the golden laurel that was on the Lauren's body. No. no there was no off. discussion. It there fell was, off. There was an absolute no from everybody besides one person. Yes. <laughs> and and <laughs> so... One entity. And one so, entity. Yeah, so, re- realizing that, you know, this one entity was not Warren. Um, uh, uh, Terwin agreed to it. And said, I'd like to have a few moments alone with uh, the body to say a prayer. Um, because uh, Terwin's religious enough. He's not reverend, but he's, he's, he's religious not enough. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so he stayed behind, said, uh, said a prayer, but uh, because he was curious, he did put the, the laurel on to see if something happened. And oh, in, something happened. In, in a moment of weakness, because his mayhem came out, and nothing happened. So he placed the uh, laurel back down um, and uh, uh, came out of the room with his, like, acting like he was stuffing it in the, the satchel. And uh, the uh, entity believes that. Um, Terwin has it, and so then, with uh, we we found our way up to the surface. We found an abandoned building, and um, we left some stuff behind. Well, Warren came back, and before that happened, oh uh, yeah, yeah, we went out. Uh, uh, Terwin and the entity <laughs> went out in Warren's body, uh, and uh, 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 patrolled the street. Well, tried to find something, anything. And we found a family running away from uh, zealots, cannibals, <laughs> maybe zealots. Yeah. Uh, yeah, zealots that were persecuting them so. because they they had a, a vice of having butter on bread or something like that. Uh, and so we turned around, uh, even though Terran wanted to save them, he he knew that that would be a bad idea. Just the entity us. convinced him not to. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, and it's a good thing the MC convinced him not to because it would have been a suicide mission. Yes. Um, 
the because uh, I think there was four of them. Mm-hmm. Uh, the that we went back. Uh, Warren came back somehow, uh, and the entity was no longer present. Um, Warren said, he "I slept." He finally yeah. slept. Yeah. Oh, he okay, slept, yeah, yeah. None of us had slept in like right. for, for three days or something, or two uh, days. Or Warren shared with us that he believed that the entity could still pay attention to what we are doing, like things that Warren saw the entity would see or things that Warren heard the entity would hear. So we just took him at his base value and um, we switched who was carrying um, the laurel. And that's where we stopped. Yeah. And every single word that was possibly visible was written out or covered up with paint. <clears throat> yes, yes. Correct. Oh, yeah. Any right. number, any letter, any no street signs. Anything. Yeah. All of Almerd's Gate, as you look out the windows in the barren streets, the smell of burning is pervasive, and it almost feels like a different world for the rest of the rest of um, Kiltirian. Is you can't hear it, you can't see it. All Almeren's gates is almost dead quiet, save for the winning of a horse here and there, the scampering of a dog. Every building, every painted billboard, every bill of paper on the walls pinned to um, posts have been painted over with red or black paint. Um, not a single word can be seen. No numbers upon the street, upon the street uh, signs. They've been struck down. Nearby, there is a smoldering set of school books wrapped in a in a belt and just smoldering on the side. And remember, you are in this small coaching station, a pedicab station, um, that is been abandoned, save for a stagecoach and horses in the nearby garage. So there are horses? Yes, there are. At least make sure they're fed. I mean, I mean, they've been eating. Okay, clearly. yeah, just make but you know, the, know. Whoever was keeping these horses are gone. Whoever is in this coaching station where you'd come and you would, you would take your coins. Remember, you take your coins up on the up on the, the windowsill and you would tap, and then they would come out and give you a ride where you need to go in the city. It's a sta- it's a coaching station. It's a it's a um, it's a Coventry palanquin specifically. Okay. So Coventry <clears throat> They're everywhere. They are. There it looks like the coachmen, coach people, whatever, coaches are gone. They're not here. Uh, and message. it's been abandoned. But this is a kind of a small roundabout cul-de-sac where one would take a coach and be able to kind of round it around this large bend and then come back out to the city. It's quiet. It's too quiet. You awake in that morning. Well, I've been imperiled from earlier. Do we change that or do I you, leave that? You rested, uh, yeah. but you were not in safety. Everyone is imperiled okay. when they awaken. I figured I was staying. That's right. That's right. Everyone is imperiled. As was decided before, we really don't know what to do. So we should just head out about and see what we can do. Do we, um, do we know where the docks are? Mm-mm. No, we couldn't, couldn't find them last night. Can we boost? Didn't you crawl up to the, like... Yeah, that's what I was going to... I mean, I, that was my plan in the morning. We were, I was going to crawl up and look around and... Yes! And call and out what I saw. You can see the docks from here, uh, where they adjoin um, the edge of Almer's Gaze. It rambles down the... Uh, the side of the cliffs that make up Kaelteria near the near the the Axwater River, uh, but um, you can see that there's a lot of smoke and smoldering near the docks, and it's hard to make out who's there, what buildings are intact. The city doesn't look like it's been burnt. It's just there's a lot of smoke, um, and it's clearly coming from you guessed campfires uh, all around near the docks. Not far from there, you can see a large soaring stone building that looks like a broad squat tower uh, that must be the Lyceum the, okay. of, the, of, the, of the Alornites. It's not far from the docks. Well, 
We know where the docks are, but as Jonathan had said, we have to go by the Lyceum to get to him. Right, because we came here for two reasons, but the main reason is to finish the case. The right. secondary reason is to pay our debt for the under path. Right, we came here looking for Jonah Sparrow. Mm-hmm. That's right. And if we happen to find that <clears throat> Booker. fancy lady's yeah, brother, which apparently they're friends, then, uh, well, the more the better, right? Perhaps we should go back through the notes that were recovered, recouped in Kale Tyrion, in the murder room, which uh, only Elisa has, apparently. Notes. There were three things found in the yeah. burning fireplace. By the way, um, Elisa sets her walking cane against the wall while she's there. Yeah. This is just too much to carry. Someone else would like it. Oh, that's a good idea, actually. <laughs> Why would I? <laughs> like, like I said, I'm, I'm over encumbered at this point, so. Uh, yeah, I think I'm pretty well encumbered as well because I'm carrying several of those pistols. You had a brace, you had like a bandolier of them, right? Yeah, I have a, I have a bandolier of pistols now. That's right, and then you load them all too? I, I can. Uh, um, because I offer. I think I think you. I remember seeing you. Remember you fanned them out on the nearby table. Yeah, I was like, like go through them and clean them and fix them and get the barrels undone because they're they all locked up. Yeah, five of them <laughs> locked up. I cleaned all of them out. They all locked up at the same time. Like, <laughs> what are the damn odds? <laughs> well, it's probably because they never cleaned these things. That's what took me so long. <laughs> they just ill ill weapon condition. So, you, you know. should always clean your gun. Right. Elisa lays down her thick volume and starts flipping through it. Copious notes she has taken since you set out toward Kale Tyrion. All right, I'm going to get rid of the fancy blue cape that I was given for okay. the... I forgot I even had it in my yeah. character. Toss the tape aside. Perhaps you even leave, you put it over the stick or the walking cane. The Dupre cane. Well, he already just left a pile yeah. of... He put, left a pile of gems. Yeah, yeah, jewelry. Oh, everybody's unequipping. Yeah, well, but he—it's it's, it's like in, it's like in Skyrim when you pause everything, <laughs> yeah. falls to the ground. <laughs> Why did I have so much cheese? <laughs> Wheel the cheese. Cheese wheels just go flowing exactly. across the countryside. <laughs> um, well, that'll bring me so down. So I have the pause screen. <laughs> I have a freight. I have a note from a messenger that says something about Templeton Murdoch. Mm-hmm. I have a page that says something about the esoteric and Durandal. And I have a piece of paper that says Emil Frosch, Village of Stowe, and send it to Durendal. So the esoteric of Durendal okay? is the reason that we're going after the Booker guy, right? Because Jonathan and Warren's buddy, <laughs> the entity, <laughs> both seem to think the book is here. And they both think that Booker can help them. Well... Well, let's, Jonathan let's that. rewind because that's not true. That's not true. No. no, there's you're missing some important details, and perhaps you should go back through your notes because you're missing several important details that led you to Edward Booker. It was only by happenstance that you discovered that it was Josephine Booker's brother. He is the dealer of said books. Yes. In Celtirian, and he is reputedly providing it to. Hexenstern through Jonas Sparrow. Right. Um, yes, this is not the whim and wishes of Warren, but <laughs> <laughs> it is that there are details perhaps that were missed or it's, glossed over. Well, those are for, that's from the next day. I've got that. Yes. Listed. But the the three notes that we had, that's the one the information we had there. So then, yeah, I've got Hexenstern deals and curiosities with Jonah. That's part of that's his side job. Stowe is a down the river. Uh, Emil Frosch is a bootlegger and mid-folk apothecary who used to work for Zoxen. The Zoxen, whatever. The, the foundry. Yeah, foundry. And Bruno Lehman was somebody else that was brought up who's established a trust with the master and has something to do with the merchant guild. Maybe we should take a review of all of our major NPCs, because I feel that we've kind of lost it over the past couple weeks. It'd be a good idea to start there. 
because you're missing several important details at this point. Mm. And I believe most of Lisa has mo some of them. At least. No, I don't have. I only have one person, which is Templeton Murdoch. Mm. I mean, I have things like the Guiding Hand. Who's the Guiding Hand? The Guiding Hand is a mysterious group in Durindal trying to control events. Of, we believe they are headed by Bruno Layman, or and then uh, Eustace. Uh, Adelard for useless Adelard, as we like to call him. Uh, apparently, he's part of the Guiding Hand, and it was also a part of the uh, Thirteen, or not the Thirteen? Was it the Thirteen? Yeah, su- the, the Prophet. Super, the the super super stained, stained Prophet. prophet. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, let's see, Jonathan. He was, the, the he was basically the spokesperson for him. Yes. Right. Uh, Sir Jimmy Cooper. I don't think her copper. Uh, Dirge the Younger. These are all people from the the, the Nido. We were That's trying right. to figure out who was Lady the Gabrielle. Um, who to watch, basically. Yeah, most of my stuff is not people. The only person when I have is Templeton Murdoch, and we don't have much information on him. Um, yeah, I mean, I got pretty much all the names from everyone that was at the. So, what's the connection to Booker? Like, what you came you you came to find a way into Almeron's gates, but why? Well, there was the assassin. I thought it was because the assassin was brought in by my old friend. The assassin yes, was brought in by were... Tem- was brought in by Bruno Lehman, we believe, and he came in with Jonah Sparrow on yeah, his ship. We were going so to, we were ask... to talk to Jonah mm-hmm. about the assassin because we were trying to chase down. How in the world could we miss a giant monster? Yeah, because that's pretty much how we view the Siabra. Like we haven't seen. See opera before. Um, so uh, it was it was rumored that uh, a very tall person in a robe or something like that was brought in through Jonas Sparrow. So what's the connection to a Satirica Durindal? The book um, that Jonah might be able to get his hands on a Satirica Durindal in uh, Almeron's Gates through Booker. Through Booker. Who deals with Hex and Stern in getting antiquities and specialty items? So, with that understanding in mind, what is your objective here in Omer's Gates? Find Sparrow and or Booker. Both, really. They would yeah. lead to each other, we assume. So, whichever one we can find. Right, because we had an address for Mr. Booker, but we can't see street signs and numbers anymore, so... Yeah, 220-something B, Booker Street. Yeah, he has his own Sherlock Holmes' address. Yeah. 221 B, Booker Street, yeah. That's how I could remember that much. Instead of Baker Street, but yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, he's not a baker. He's a booker. He's a booker. He's a candlestick maker. <laughs> a booker? The baker, the candles. No, it's not. It was. So, <laughs> what to do from here? Well, since we don't we don't have any possible way of orientating ourselves, we can't navigate, from, right? Because yeah, there's no street signs <laughs> or numbers. We're hoping to find someone that is not Inquisition. Basically, we need to go out and look for somebody that would know the city, or else find the docks where it's possible Jonah is. Yeah. That's true. It's moored. Um, I'll tell them it looks like there's cook there's cook fires down by the dogs. Either that or many small fires, which wouldn't make sense. No well, books. Unless we go around knocking on random doors and hoping that someone takes us in and tells us exactly where that is, <laughs> it's probably best if we go and find out what what's happening down at the docks. Sounds right to me. Right, we can keep our eyes and ears open. If we haven't come across anyone, well, mm-hmm. we can question them. I highly doubt that's going to happen. As I said, if can't hurt to keep your eyes open. I think if we come across somebody, we better be prepared to fight. Yeah. And uh, sounds like your experience last night was not one of uh, welcome. Pe- peacekeeping all welcome. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I wanted to see about maybe saving that family, but, uh, well, with just the two of us, and never knowing what 
Um, One of you is going to do. Yeah, I know what Warren would do. But I don't know what the other would do. So mm. couldn't... She's... They have already left us once, so... Predictability yeah. says they would leave us. <laughs> Not you, Warren, of course. Of course. So, so boss, if you want to go... Hey, before we, before we leave, if, if, I mean, if we we're expecting to run into trouble along the way, I say we take that coach. I mean, you know, if, if someone's going to fight, I mean, the coach will let us get out of the situation quicker. Mm. You know what I'm saying? You know how to drive one. I do. Oh. Oh. Although, a coach is a lot harder to uh, sneak. Well, it is. That's, that's what I'm saying. We, we ain't sneaking at this point. I mean, it's broad daylight. People like him is jingling around in chain. Put everybody yeah. besides myself and uh, the coach. We don't have a we don't have a spatter gun, do we? I, oh, I, look, I look at him. I will walk over to the coach him. and open up the the seat. Normally, where they would keep. You look underneath the uh, coachman's seat, and sure enough, there's a Betty there. Yep, <laughs> right here. Are well, you want to make sure that thing's? Properly loaded for me. As you look at it, you realize this thing is much larger than a standard blunderbuss. Huh? You can see all these metal pipes and framework sitting inside of it. I'm gonna pick it up and like examine it. <sighs> it's heavy. It's heavy. Oh man, this thing is heavy. He grabs on the gr- brass railing and swings a leg up on top of the coach. And you can see that there's a hatch on the top, and there's this metal framework where the whole thing would just be locking on top. You know, I'm not saying we got it now, <laughs> but I'm what saying is, we got it. What, what is that foul contraption? Oh, ho, oh, oh. ho. Uh, what a mount. <laughs> it's a, remember how we had that thing on top of the boat? Think of it a bit smaller. Sounds but, dangerous. And you call it a pickle gun? Uh, it shoots pickles. <laughs> yeah, it shoots pickles. Because uh, anyone who gets shot at is definitely in a pickle. It'd be a puckle gun. Puckle gun. That's yeah. what it was. Pickle that's gun. Right. Puckle gun. I don't know firearms. That's all right. It did, pre- did pretty good. It is a puckle gun. I heard you standing there talking about all that. Is it that now? Man. It is. I'm impressed. Oh, man. Well, shit. So. Let's load them up. Move them out. That's up to you, boss. Puckle gun is a war machine. It is a war machine. War machine. It's a good thing I got. Uh, Old beat, dear one. War Two ranks of warfare. Gun. <laughs> it, it depends. How much? How much we're looking to get into violence? You're all ready to get into violence. Hey, I'm not saying we get into violence. I'm there, saying uh, this thing it's in, here. Okay, war machines it's in are the, it's yeah, yeah, mango. All right. I'm saying this thing here is the quickest way we get out of the violence. Or avoid it altogether. So. That's where we found the I've, stats last time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've yeah, been yeah. involved. I've been involved in many skirmishes. And there's a couple ways of going about it. You either make yourself seem like a target you wouldn't want to mess with, and people will avoid you. And that's the strategy of taking that. Mm-hmm. Or, sometimes it doesn't matter how much noise you make, because there's plenty of other noise about. So as long as you can remain a block or two away from those patrols, they won't notice you. Yeah, sure, I can't sneak up behind anybody wearing this. as all a, like, ching ching shake the, the chain. But a block away... It's... But it's, it's right or walk, boss. It, that's the decision. Well. Now, I don't know the roads well enough, but if he's got, what do you call the spot next to the, the shutter, the shooter? What, what do you call that? It's, it's one last thing we need to consider. Shotgun. Shotgun. If we, if we go traipsing about on foot through this, we could be seen as, you know, maybe somebody who uh, 
uh, was, you know, up to no good, but still not much of a threat. We take a carriage, poke a gun and all, we may get a lot more attention. Three minutes have passed, and already uh, Harper has the puckle gun not only mounted on top of a carriage, mm -hmm. he's sitting inside the coach. Like, you can see this top of his body, and he's holding onto the gun like this, and he cheek clang the locks like this, this a series of bolts inside. It's, like <laughs> it's right. Middle <laughs> room running dead. Oh, my God. Hey, boy -o. I think you know his vote. <laughs> Do you love... <laughs> it swivels only this way and that up to a uh, basically it swivels on hundred. It swivels a full three hundred sixty degrees. Oh. oh, or sorry, my apologies. No, sorry, one hundred eighty degrees to yeah. side to side. Yeah. So it's either in front or beside. I mean, I'm just saying. <laughs> this is the prettiest pretty. thing I've ever been seen. <laughs> uh, how many people does it take to operate a puckle gun? Three. Listen here. I can help with that. Got me, I've got me uh, experience up in the load. You sit inside the uh, Taylor. Sorry, my apologies, Benneker. You you kind of take a seat in the coach and coachy's seat, just to kind of. It's well worn. You can feel your butt kind of sit in the depression oh, yeah, and good. under the wood, and you kind of. <laughs> the horses, yeah, it's kind of. <laughs> still enough room for something to beside you too. So it we takes three people to re it takes three people to load the puckle gun. Unless you have one person. And to qu clarify, it takes three minutes to load. Is that right? Yeah, it does say three minutes. Three minutes and how many people? Uh, crew is three. So it takes three people to load it. If it's one person, multiply by three. So, I've got me experience and I can help them out. Yeah, it's not. Never mind. I was going to say, the gunslinger trait says you can load any weapon possessing the gunpowder quality. <laughs> As an action for zero APs. <laughs> this is not a weapon. Uh, well, uh, it, no, well, it's, it's, it's not AP machine. cost. It's time in minutes. That's correct. And <laughs> it's not a weapon. It's a war machine. War machine. Yeah. 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 Uh, it just says any weapon. It's war not a weapon. Weapons. It's a war machine. It's a war machine. Simple <laughs> weapons, martial melee weapons. Uh, it is a war machine. How many shots does the puckle gun have? It's repeating, so three. You get three shots. What? Tell, tell us the stats on a puckle gun. Okay. <laughs> he, he begins going through in character like what it can do. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. So I would need three people to help me with this. Now, I would be the primary fire, of course. Um, mm. It'll take about three minutes or so, I think, with, uh, with our capabilities. Now, the, the range on it is all right. Uh, we might want someone to be the cider because um, it's about, mm, what, yeah, like, it's six plus your perception yards. <laughs> Perception bonus. He's, he's trying to put it in terms. But six right. times perception bonus. Six times perception bonus. Uh huh. Six so that times. That seems like six times. Yes. Yeah. That's no. That's really that, far. That's short range. All right. All right. And then for damage. All right. Like it's forty-two yards for right. me. It's six d six plus peanut butter, or as, as I call it, perception bonus. <laughs> peanut butter. Peanut butter. Six d six. Okay. So what are the qualities on it? All right. So it is artillery, it is gunpowder, and it is repeating. So artillery uh, does what? So if it's repeat, if it, hey, if you can fire that thing, thing several times, how many does it hold? Well, the artillery is in your per, is in your character folio, which, by the way, has all of the qualities for war machines, weapons, shields, armor, and all. So let's read what artillery does first. Yeah. These will come in. These will come into play. Mm -hmm. Artillery weapons and shields of this quality can be loaded and fired while standing in an engagement. Furthermore, these weapons force foes to flip the result to fail whenever they attempt to dodge or parry <laughs> an attack made with an artillery weapon. Yeah. Go ahead and try parrying. So it has artillery. It has what else? It has gunpowder. Uh huh. Which we know gunpowder does. Gunpowder explodes on ones and sixes. Uh huh. Can't be dodged or parried. Right. And, and then did. repeating. And so the repeating. Let's get back to that. Range weapons of this quality can be fired but three times without having to spend action points to load. That's right. So there is your puckle gun mounted on top of a of a stagecoach. If you're intending to take the stagecoach, who's going to drive it? I'm the only one that can. Okay. So, here's what you're going to do. Because you are going to be driving the stagecoach, you will have uh, a pair of scissors over here. 
you will have a weapon with stats. So I guess we're driving here? Yeah. So four <laughs> horsepower, mod size is 18. If you're talking. So I'm going to cut, cut something out for you. You'll have oh, a vehicle okay. tracker. No, yeah. I was just going to use the back here with vehicle combat. I actually have a, v- I have a vehicle tracker for you you can use. Oh, okay. You can see as you as you hop off and you kind of assess the yep yep you assess this thing you see that it's uh, on the side of it is painted and it's called the ladybird in uh, in um, person. So take this God, sheet here. Horrible. Your vehicle name is the lady ladybird. The vehicle type is stagecoach and right in your stats. Whole Foods, why? Hey that boy up. Let's get this. Uh, Loaded up right. That way, hopefully, we won't need to fire this a fourth time. Right, right. So, um, we got me, you, and uh, you. It only takes one to drive, five passengers, so we're perfect there, right? But Lisa, you said you wanted to help out with this? Well, I ain't touching that thing. <laughs> Alright, well, then, Lisa. I, I guess. I, I can help. I don't know so what I'm Lisa, doing. Lisa, tear one. And uh, Harper inside the coach. We're main in the coach. coach. That will leave uh, the driver as um, Banneker and the passenger as Warren. I guess you get to be the uh, royal passenger or the champion passenger. Do you well, have a, uh, like you see it. You have a ranged <laughs> weapon of some sort. Yeah. I think Bo here. Right, yeah, he's got a whip too. If I get too close. Well, I, was, I have my crossbow. Would you rather? I'm fine. Man the crossbow and let and have war and help us out. To be honest, uh, I, I, I'm not the best shot. I just happen to have one, so I'm right. fine. You'll be fine. Just do do as we tell you to do. Oh, you po- point things out. Bit of noticing. Can't hit them. For what shit. do I think? Threshold. Am I missing in here on the qualities? Vehicle threshold. Yeah. It's your. So what you do is you look at your per, what's your perception bonus? Eight. Okay. So you take two plus the size modifier of the vehicle threshold, and that's what it is. Oh, so eighteen. Mm-hmm. So twenty. That, that's, that's right. That's nice. That's, that's a very nice vehicle threshold. Actually, you're the best to drive then, because mine's only seven, and I think I'm the next highest for perception. So, with using a war machine, can we, since we have three people in the crew, can we use different people's stats for different parts of the gun? Or is it like, since I would be potentially firing it, that we always have to use my stats? Uh, it'd be whoever fire, whoever pulls the trigger. Okay. So to speak. For you. Okay. Can we assist in some way? You, you can always mar- assist. you got martial range. No, yeah, it's warfare. It's warfare. Oh, is it warfare? Yeah. yeah. That's why I'm out there. Ah, I see why you're up there. Yeah, we're the two warfare guys. Warfare. Teach you how to play the game of warfare. Warfare. Uh-huh. <laughs> you need your double-bladed, silly sword from Star Trek. Warf it. Warfare. <laughs> it's warfare. It's what I mean. <laughs> Remember, stagecoach. Its movement is modified by your brawn bonus and not because it is drive. Come on, to club. So, what are the qualities that your stagecoach has? Ghost ride. What's ghost ride mean? I don't know. Hold on, I just, want to, I just want to say ghost ride like that. Like, oh, ghost ride the whip! Ghost ride! That means you can step outside of it and it continues rolling. It's literally what it means. What's it mean to ghost ride? What's the quality? Put back. It's a quality. It's alphabetized. All your qualities are alphabetized on the right hand side of your sheet. Oh, it's over here. I'm like looking underneath here. Yeah. Uh, ghost ride. Vehicle with this quality allows it to drive to change speed for one less AP. Okay. Vehicles with this quality allow its driver, that makes way more sense, to change speed for one less AP. Mm-hmm. Nice. Yeah. So that's a ghost that ride. It's what do leaf springs do. Change. Hold on, I don't want to write this down so I don't forget. Speed. Mm-hmm. Ghost ride, going crazy. Who's that driving? Patrick Swayze. <laughs> <laughs> Ripping the throat out. <laughs> Rubin's right, racing. Rubin's racing. Cole. Rubin's racing, Warren. <laughs> Did you know? Uh, vehicles with this quality allow that its driver to flip the results to succeed at sideswiping. However, they must also flip the results to fail to jink. 
So side swiping is, and you want to make sure that I said, okay, that's when beside a vehicle, make a successful operate check. The other driver must resist the operate check or be side swiped. Cannot use jink until the next turn. So it's like dirty tricks. Okay. So you can jink and then collide. Okay. So making a, so a jink, which you have to now flip to fail. Jink is basically your invasion. Dodge. It's the dodge. And remember, you can, you can as a driver of a vehicle. it's a big vehicle. That's right. You can dodge for your horses, the vehicle, or anybody on it. So if somebody's like, is like uh, you're going to get hit by a weapon, you can be like, you know what? I'm going to jink so they don't get hit. And it's swerving. That's right. Flip to succeed. Get out the way like Casper drive. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> what does this mean? What? So I, guess, so I guess the decision's already been made. We're, we're, we're rolling this thing. Yes, I'm, yeah. I'm just saying, if we're going to get in a fight, this is the biggest damn gun with street. I just realized I lost two percent of my brawn, and I lost one of my bra or my brawn bonus, so I went down by two. Ooh. <laughs> At least I got weak as shit this week. And you're already injury prone. Like I literally am. injury prone. I am. I'm not a fighter. Are you, are you wearing any armor? Ah, uh, quilted. Hey. Uh, you're not bleeding. Yeah, you're not bleeding. Well, he's you're not bleeding. Yeah. So remember, a puckle gun does not. <laughs> It is a single shot. Right. Oh. A single shot. And, and just so I under, understand it correctly, it takes one to fire, three to reload, right? To clarify, yeah. uh, to fire a war machine, it is a warfare test. Mm -hmm. uh, to load, it takes three minutes. Mm -hmm. And then the crew is, so the crew is operating it the whole time, right? The crew is loading it only. Okay. Right. He's, the crew doesn't need to man it themselves. When he begins the load process, he needs two other people to assist him. Right. So the, the reason I'm asking is like, in case we do get in a fight, in case yeah. they jump vehicles and some awesome, really cool stuff that could happen, yeah. could I fight beside it? Okay. Yeah. That's, yep. that's absolutely. Cause just, yeah, because I get what you're saying, because like, if you read the description in the book, it's like, war machines require the attention of many people to right. approximately handle it, or appropriately yeah. handle it. No. Some focus on accessing distance, a few others on positioning it, and then the crew leader to either pull the trigger or light the fuse when the time is right. Yeah, right. I just, just yeah. needed to know. Yep, so, so, so yeah, that's you, can, that means. you can cover his ass, basically. <clears throat> yeah, so it's a, it's, a great, it's a great rules clarification question. Yeah. The, 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 the spirit of the rule yeah. is that the number of people that it takes is the number of people that's not necessarily to fire it, but to load it. Cool. Mm -hmm. To load the weapon up. Mm -hmm. Yes. Cool. The load time. I like it. Yep. In fact, um, yeah. So Whenever loading, it's assumed that the crew are using three APs to do so, to operate it. So if I'm using a battery and lamp ram, I only need six people to load it, but I myself can use it. That's right. <laughs> and it's a single. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Within reason. I'm being on. silly here. <laughs> but assistant. Right, right, right. right. No, I'm just being silly. If, in fact, you, have you would still roll. Right, I would make the roll. <laughs> you would still have the same six mother... <laughs> Come on, man. Yeah. <laughs> so, you have your carrot. You have your stagecoach, the ladybird. And you should name it. It's like the SWAT team battling ram. Yeah. yeah. One person. Yeah. Well, they're yeah, battery name. rams. They're like the, the things they use to break down yeah, like, yeah, no, no, no. doors. He's, yeah. He's being a oh, smartass. Smart oh, ass like I'm being a oh, I see. What? Me? Hey. Smartass? We good with calling this lady, bud. What does that even mean? Well, you see, there's a certain type of bond that you form with your vehicle, even though the vehicle can't form it back. What? What? You name your vehicle. It's important for the driver to name its vehicle. Rusty, then. Okay. Every vehicle I drive is rusty, like every horse. So rename your vehicle to Rusty. And in fact, there's some paint there. He <laughs> Do I really? and then writes Rusty with a backwards R. <laughs> Before we Thank hit it, I think we should call it the Depraved. Just kidding. It's like Dupre Dupre. Oh, it's I think one. we probably shouldn't put writing on it because it'd be the only thing in this goddamn place that would have writing on it. Well, that makes me want to write something more on it, like 
The other driver. Fuck the Inquisition or something easy. I mean, if you want to write a dissertation, you feel free. But well, honestly, Rusty's good enough. You're the, you're the driver. It's, it's your call. That's what all horses and all wagons should be called. There's no question. <laughs> right. That's what my 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 toy horse was when I was a kid. All right. So we get all the superstition Mr. out of Rusty. the way. Before we head out, does anyone need any uh, wound treatment and surgery and the like? I could use it. Yeah. A, little, a little bit. I'll check my other character sheet. I think I'm okay, but... Do you have any way to restore Baron and that bag of drinks? <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, minus two. And then minus two. They have rogue hair now. <laughs> yeah, I'm rogue. Hmm. I'm good. Actually. So what's your condition at? Lightly. Okay. It's all right. It's all right. It's all right. Okay. All right. Do you I'm have well. bandages? I do. Unless I do too. otherwise. I'm moderate. This is a clean... Do you need some more <laughs> Yes, I have bandages. Do you need more? Remember, I bought extra when you. Um, we split them when last time we bought them. I have. And we kept them up separate in case one of us gets wet, like I. <laughs> I have plenty of bandages. Okay. Actually, I actually have honey in, so I can make more if I need okay. to. Okay. Right. So you're into treat Elisa as well? Yes. It is a routine heal test. Routine heal. Okay. Should we should take your time. <clears throat> All right. Um. Routine heal will be seventy-four percent chance to succeed. Okay, my encumbrance is back. To- I remember. If, uh, oh, on y'all. Yeah, it's a 32, oh, on y'all. 32 success. Success. So you go up one step of the damage you get. Me too. That's why I got rid of some clothing. <laughs> so I roll, I roll for Adam. Or remember, if you need a gun, win. I got the bandolier here. Tara one is lightly? Yeah. Oh, it's automatic. Show the two that are in my crew. Yeah. Good. Anybody else need some healing feeling? Nope. I didn't get hurt. Just got drained. <laughs> It's got Very really. <laughs> this carriage house got really interesting. <laughs> this got really interesting. <laughs> the, the carriage is now called. Sorry, the stage coach is now called the Dire Penetrator because the Dire <laughs> Penetrator, the Rusty Penetrator. Where did someone find a red lantern? This is really strange. <laughs> so you open you open the garages, these big swinging barn doors that open into the city. And there are, and if I recall, there are four horses for Rusty, the stagecoach. You mm-hmm. all take your seats at this point? Yeah, I'll help. Hey, boy, Al. What's your name in that gun? It's important. Pickle. Uh, <laughs> pickle. I mean, <laughs> it shoots pickles. Put, pucker up, pickle. <laughs> I see, mean, we, we used to have a siege weapon back in the day. All right. It's called the horse hunt. I don't know if I'd call it Horson, but... Uh, no, you don't want to call it that. There's already one. Right. I'm just saying that's what we had. You've become quite obsessed with naming things in this uh, world. Well, so some see, of the notorious ones were the Hell's Trumpet, there was Gut Bucket, there was the Horson. How about that vile contraption and be done with it? I don't know about vile contraption. This here is a work of art. This is it. Cheats pickles. It's liable to explode and kill us all. Oh, the pucker gun. Because it's going to make their butt cheeks. You know, we really like this gun. The guy down in the lower city. You know, do you have a, do you ever write a letter without, without addressing who you write? In? Just call it Rusty's Prick and let's move on. Yeah, we could do that. <laughs> Rusty Prick sounds good enough. Hmm. Or Rusty's, like possessive. Not like he owns it. Yes. Right. Rest in peace, Rusty. Hey. We're going to get a move on. Right, you better know its name before you fire. All right, I'll fire it. I'll let you know before I fire it. So, the, you, Vorin opens the garage. You can feel the cold winter wind on your face and the snow kind of dappling the cobblestone and then suddenly... It rumbles to life. Rattling and clattering against the cobblestone making a soft crunching sound across the uh, the snow in the city. And you begin moving through Almeron's gates. Where is it you intend to go? The docks. The docks. We, uh... I mean, we're, we're already putting the big giant billboard. We're coming. We're coming through the city. The darkness. As we drive, I'm going to see if I can find any signs that or symbols that might have been. I know a lot of things are written out, but just in case. So kind of watching for symbols? Yes. Okay. Okay. 
Good idea. Sometimes it paid. People leave notes. Yeah, we was looking around all last night. Didn't find a damn thing. Well, it was dark. Well, didn't seem to hinder me any. But, uh, you can see in the dark now. Well, I can't, but she can. She. Yeah, it was weird. I had my hand on him, on his back the whole time. The horse whinnies and comes to a stop. You leave the cul-de-sac and the streets open before you. Who intends to lead the way? We need someone to navigate the streets. Don't all jump on it at once. Hell. You can stay here before going into the city. No worries about that, but there's no telling what will come across this broad promenade that spreads before you in the city. Uh, I suppose. I'll, I'll point and say, from the window, it would be this way. So you No. <laughs> So I don't he stands. Have, I don't he stands in the coach, and he kind of points the direction he saw the docks, and you can see a sprawling city before you, low roofed apartments, <laughs> tall soaring workshops, a nearby soup kitchen that's abandoned. Whoa, 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 whoa! Hold on. What are you rolling for? You told me somebody's got to do it. I'm the only one that's stepping up. Okay. All right. So I'm, you're gonna navigate the way. I'm a, I'm a fucker, damn. At this point, it is a Literally. secret navigation test. Of course God. it is. <laughs> oh, of course it's flipped. So I, I don't, you know don't have the skill. skill. Oh. That is uh, a twenty-one uh, 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 or a twelve. You know what? You could be 21. the navigator. Yeah. And uh, that means I have a forty-eight percent chance. So try to keep it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> So remember, you have fortune points up here. There are five, so sorry, six in the possession. Yeah. Are there six in the thing up here? It's supposed to fail. Oh, yeah, so it's yeah. always the worst. Are there dice yes. in there right now? No. Okay, good. Just perfect. All right. And with so that... three... I would have to be... I even beat Arduous? Yeah. The horses pick up. You want to beat Arduous? Yes, I do. <laughs> Eleven. The Eleven way or you one would be the only two options that Look, are there. Look, because then that's... Well, no, that's well, ten. It's because yeah. I'm amazing. You are the uh, the coach is rolling at this point uh, along the way through the streets, and there's no one to be seen. Uh, when you come down this broad road, you see this small child standing out in the snow, um, just outside on the porch. There's only like maybe half an inch of snow and dust on the ground. The child is quickly brought back into the house by this woman in her skirts, and they slam the door shut as you pass by. Shutters begin to close. There's there's some chimney smoke coming from some homes. Uh, some home, but everything's shuttered up and closed. Not from the outside, but it's shuttered. No business is to be had in Almeyer's Gate today. It's very evident that uh, people are afraid of Inquisitor Evangeline and her cohort. Well, we got a we got a shot for her. Let's not get too confident. What's that, boss? I can't hear you up here. The wind's too perfect. <laughs> ah! <laughs> Pride. It's a motherfucker, but I own it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm grinning ear to ear. I love, I'm loving every minute of this. And then suddenly... A snow. First, the snowflakes are fat and wet. And you can feel the wind buffeting against you as it kind of falls slowly. The wind's kind of battering against you as you're moving through the streets. You feel a shiver and a chill. As you're making your way through Almer and Skate, everyone needs to make... Uh, I'm sorry, not everybody. Who here is corpulent? Who here is husky? 
make a routine toughness test to withstand cold. If you're a husky. Oh, routine toughness test. Yes. <laughs> it's like, what are you rolling? I don't know. Uh, toughness, toughness, toughness. I am not very tough. 23. I am super tough today, though. Who has a normal standard build? Raise your hand. Pride is a... Make a standard toughness test to withstand the perils of the cold. Okay. You, you frail. You frail. And a roll 72. I'm slipping. Us frail. All right. You both are right. You fail. You suffer 11. Yep. Physical peril. All right. You hear Slender. Slender. Yep, Slender is challenging. Toughness is staying cold. 92. Mm. 13. Physical peril. Noble Savage. <laughs> Which is? <laughs> Never suffer peril from a failed toughness. Okay. That's and then toughness. finally, those who are... That's why I didn't remember. Oh, yes. Frail. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's a hard what toughness test care? for the frail ones. 22! Yeah. That's 73. <laughs> no. Just didn't do it, right? 83. That's 13 physical power for the both of you. Yeah. Oh, your teeth are chattering. <laughs> I'm sorry. Who's inside the coach? Raise your hand. Uh, oh, you suffer three no of peril. us are up on the ter- oh, cool. turret. I you suffer. Mm-hmm. No, no, no. The turret is accessed through a trap door oh. on top of the stagecoach. There's no standing on top of the coach. You just flip it open. You're like, ba boom, oh. right? Oh. If you're inside the coach, you don't need to roll for any hmm. toughness tests. Cool. If you're inside, if you're outside, so you, it's different. Me and you were the only two that really needed to roll. Okay. No, you and Warren, because Warren was on the outside, right? I was on the inside. I thought you were sitting on the shotgun, on the bench. No, no, no. I wasn't operating any gun. Oh. Warren never would. No. Okay, so so stop. To clarify. The puckle gun is accessed from the inside of the stagecoach. You would okay. you would open the buggy top, okay. you would prop up, and then you'd lock, load, fire. Anyone inside the stagecoach would have access to the puckle gun. Yeah, but I need somebody to ride shotgun with me. And it can't be Mike. Elisa will. Okay. 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 So Elisa will... loaded it before we left, so... Well, yeah, it was we already did. loaded, as I mentioned before. Right. Uh, so you will clamber outside onto to ride shotgun. I, I don't really care if it's cold. Let's go. What will you be armed with? Can my light like, crossbow. Okay. However, Shkling. it'd be under my cloak. Like, I wouldn't be like... Oh, so not loaded. I'm not advertising it. Like, look so not what loaded, I got. To clarify. Okay, so she... But she would have, like, a bowl ready. Yeah. But you it's can not. throw your overcoat over and I'll, uh, rumble through the streets. I'll set up. I'll set one of my guns between us two, and I'll have one of my... Okay. Flintlock? They're yeah, they're both loaded. Okay. Oh, well, if you're putting them out, then yeah, she'd have the crossbow out. I guess if we're going to be a threat, let's be a threat, right? I've got my... I mean, i got my guns ready. I have to hold like this, though. Yeah. That was really for you. On the uh, seat. I should to... clarify about the puckle gun. It does not aim forward, lest you would hit your horses or the driver. It aims to beside... Or behind. Okay. Yes. So it's okay. not that we're up above and you just shoot over the horse. That's correct. You're shooting from beside. You can solo it to the side of the coach or the back of the coach where the trunks are. The trunks are stored on the back of the coach. Okay. Okay. So, you're rolling and rumbling through the street. And you're heading toward what you feel must be the direction that the, the docks are in. Every once so often you can smell the scent of smoke, fire, maybe. Not coming from the chimneys, but something else, like something burning, something kindling. And it's certainly not the workshop you just passed by in Ironworks. The Ironworks is shut down. Nobody's outside. It's open. The animals are exposed to the air. The thatch is covered in snow. Even some of its works were laying there, a unlit kiln. Uh, coals that have grown cold, a slab of iron still sitting near the smelter's pot, a heavy warhammer leaning against an anvil, horseshoes jangling as they can have already fixed on this iron wooden post. Even the sign that would advertise 
the cost of the horseshoe or the services to be rendered by the blacksmith has been painted over. This truly is a library of ignorance. How in the world do you have an economy this way? <laughs> <laughs> It appears that this whole place has been under the thumb of Evangeline, the Inquisitor, for some time. The, you don't s really see anyone. And when you catch a glimpse of someone, they're either stepping inside, shuttering the windows, or locking their doors. When they hear the rumbling, then they hear the rumbling of the coach, it's almost like they kind of, they know something is a mess. And that's when you stop and you see that there are coaching there are wagon tracks there are, there are tracks of wheels all throughout these streets and horse and horse droppings fresh still steaming and hot we got company huh looks like they've been using horses too Makes sense. Hmm. Well, we'll be ready for them. Let's keep <clears> on <throat> moving on and hopefully we'll get through this without running into them. Alright, I'm gonna keep on trucking then. You continue along the way. And as you do so, roll 3d6. These are threat dice. Any phase sixes? Nope. Okay. Two trees and a four. Okay. You make your way for about 20, 30 minutes or so, and somewhere in the city, you hear the sound of the bells. It must be, it must be the 11th hour, you would guess. It's very distant, and it's deeper within Kale Tyrion, but nowhere near here. Um, if you look toward the horizon, you can see kind of the chimney smoke coming from other parts of the city. But in here, in Almeron's Gate, this tight, labyrinthine, twisting roads, medieval, medieval, small medieval city within a city, um, there are no people out. No animals. Scam perhaps a scampering dog or two. Maybe some crows roosting on a nearby roof. A horse wickers at the cold. And you continue on your way. We back this thing up to the gate and just blow down the gate. And that's when you begin to smell a sm there's a smoldering in the air. <clears throat> and it's not the air is not thick with smoke, but the smoldering can be it can be smelled. Like it's not like a it's not like a wood fire, it's like a burns your nose smell. Acrid? Yeah, acrid. Yeah, that's a good way to look at it. And what you can see is that there's an like literally barring this road that you come upon there's an abandoned palanquin sitting in the middle of the road and you have no choice but to stop unless you run roughshod through it or uh from a person that is scavenging uh this palanquin the palanquin has been dropped clearly it's also been ransacked as it's as it's cloth, uh, the curtains have been torn off of it, and a beggar is scavenging perhaps one of the dead porters in the snow as he has a pair of iron pliers and is pulling the teeth out of one of the porters. He looks up and stops and looks at you. You can see this dirty-faced beggar-looking fellow. So he's got the person's head lifted up, who's all bloody and yanks the tooth out with a pair of pliers. Uh, the Magisterium request your help in moving this palaquin. I'll hold my gun in the air. Okay. It's time to do your Inquisitor service. <laughs> okay, so uh, we're going to have you make an intimidate test. Oh, I'm very uh, sorry. Uh, what is your social class? I am aristocrat. Can I, do I have intimidate? I don't have intimidate. Your test will be routine. And Elisa says, yeah! She, <laughs> I got an assist! <laughs> uh, Elisa holds her crossbow in her tiny little slender arms. That's right. Going. That's right. All right. You said routine? Yes. Okay. I have a 41% chance and I got a 20. 
Okay. As you do so, the beggar drops the or holds the pliers in the hand, drops the porter on the ground, looks both ways, and scampers off down the road. Pop, 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 pop in the snow. Oh, that didn't work. I, you know, try right. I, the beggar the turns show. a corner, and lying in the middle of the road is the palanquin. The beggar gives you I'll, no trouble. I'll bounce. I'll bounce on the boss. What's that? There's an obstacle in the way. We need help. I'm wheel the horses up, put the brake on. You gotta move this thing. I'd leave, uh. I'd leave Warren up to. Yeah. I mean, I'd leave Hopper. Now, this, this stinks of ambush. I'll, uh. You hop out, and clearly this palanquin has been ransacked. I mean. It's not an ambush. There's a beggar over there. I'll click both. Flintlocks. You'll be fine. I got you covered. Seems to me they were ambushed, oh, actually. You're fine. You get out of frame and do that. You may want to... Like, I think if you actually switch with Mike, it'd be fine. Look, look. That's my problem. I want to stand up. All the time. <laughs> <laughs> Mike Mike doesn't want to give up his got, space. All so. stuff. I know. He's got the full, the full repose there. So you've got both pistols locked and loaded in hand like this. As you stay, he stands up in the coachman's box, and Elisa's there. You've got your light crossbow locked and loaded at this point. Yeah. Okay. If he's got guns out, <laughs> there's no point in me hiding. Right. Right. Warren, Warren follows Terwin outside the uh, stagecoach to help him out. The two of you hop out, and you can see that um, it looks like from here there's there's bloody boot prints in the snow. Uh, and something happened here, clearly. You can see blood spray across the snow, like a... Yeah. Almost like a Jackson Pollock, like, uh, like the paintbrush of blood. Before we before we walk up to the... Mm-hmm. Uh, this is you simply observing from where yeah. you're at. While we're walking up there, why don't you take a look and see if you can figure out briefly what happened here. Well, two, two. for one thing, the horse is just gone. It's not going anywhere without us moving it. <laughs> well, right. It's a palanquin, yeah, so it's not anyway. drawn by horse, it's drawn by people. I, I, oh. point, I point to the tracks and say, I'm not very good at reading them. I can tell you right now. Somebody came across them, they killed them, mm-hmm. and they robbed them. <laughs> All right. That pretty much fits with the MO of this entire f- fucked up district we're in. I agree. However, if there's anything else that's out of the ordinary from a simple robbery, I would like to know it. Boss, we don't get a lot of time. No, we don't. And that's why arguing about it is going to take more time. As we go, if there's anything you notice, just let me know. Sure thing. Keep an eye out. Harper. (laughs) He kind of, he fiddles with the the turning barrel. It has... Three barrels that he's loaded with shot. He, he kind of he pulls this lever, chink, and it goes clank, chink, clank, chink, clank, ensuring that it's clear. And he's yeah. gonna boop, 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 with a little little oil tin thing and yeah. rag. He's polishing it, ensuring that's a good working condition while still watching down the road, down the path. The two of you. Yeah. So I'm gonna let Warren walk uh, first. I'm gonna pull out my shield and stay right behind him. Okay. Let's say it to it. Warren spits in his palm and rubs them together. Okay. So I just move up and move the palanquin? Mm-hmm. Okay. He steps broadly forward, paying, paying no mind to what's on the snow or on the ground, and he grabs one side of the thing, and he, <coughs> he can't lift it himself. He can't drag it himself. Turns back towards Terwin. It's literally a palanquin borne by four people who would bear somebody through the city. So you didn't see anything while we were walking up? No. All right. So I'll uh, get on the other side of the uh, palanquin and try and help him move it. Okay. You is it one that's like curtained off to where you can't see on the inside? The curtains are torn out. Okay, sorry. Yeah, it's clearly been ransacked. Whoever right. is in here, just making sure there was no one in there. No, no, no. Goodness, no. <laughs> um, you move the dead porter aside and you drag it to the side of the road where you can make your way around uh, if you're careful enough. You'll just have to go around it slowly. Okay. I'll give the thumbs up. Then we'll stop and get back on. Right. I'll tap a uh, harp around the head. Right. <laughs> back down. 
I wonder if palanquins are really a, that common of a means of conveyance around here. Uh, you know the, you know the priestly types. They, they have all these page boys that get sent to them by, by idiots. Yes, but who was in that? Because it is usually no. someone higher up that would be in one of those. Well, I had one check it out, and there was nothing. There was just the <laughs> person no. carrying it, right? Well, there was no no body of the rider. Huh. That Warren was very he's, careful. He's he looks a, very hot. He's but either then, dead or gone. Probably, I mean, he's not dead because if he's dead, he'd be here. Well, so he's that. gone. You hear this distant voice saying, Creep with me as I roll through the hood. Huh? You can, hear, go. You can hear the rumbling of wheels somewhere in a down an alleyway, maybe a different road. It just kind of <clears throat> the sound passes through and then is gone upon the wind. We need to move. Yeah, yeah. I've been saying that. You all hop back in and you begin moving very slowly beside the palanquin. It slowly rumbles over something. As you look back, you can see the porter's poor legs smashed and shattered beneath of it. Ugh. All right. And as you turn the corner, you can see that there is this blazing red hot fire of this massive pile of ash and, and wood. All pile, like tables and chairs and only chairs. Brooms. Back. That's right, only chairs in the back. Uh, bookcases. In this huge open, huge open um, area where all these roads kind of meet. And the pile of bookcases must be 10 feet high by 20 feet diameter. You can see all these open doors near these uh, shops. You can see books left in the wake, kind of almost like a breadcrumb trail to each of these nearby stores. You can see burning paintings that have been thrown onto the pyre. And you stop and you look around there, it's dead quite a while, save for the fact that this flame is uh, burning. Are we near the big building? Yes. No, 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 I'm sorry, you're not, no. You're not near that. You're you're not even sure how far you are at this point, but you know you're going the right direction. This looks like a lot of bookstores, though. Yes. This might be our place. This looks like Booker Street here. I mean, could be. No numbers. No numbers. Do we want to look for... Anyone want to make an educated guess? I say the docks. I still say the docks, boss. At least he knows where the hell he's going. We don't. If you'd like, I could really quickly scan the area and check one or two stores on the way through, but... Remember, somebody else is out here in a, in a carriage. I hear him clattering around. If you'd like to continue, we, we can, but this does seem the most likely place to right, find this so, book a person. So we are... This is for my knowledge. We are... We were looking for Booker Street because we believed... Who would be her? Booker. Josephine Booker's brother, Jonathan okay. Booker. Right, and so we're Edward. we're going to yeah. we're going to uh, Josephine uh, yeah. Jonas because we believe he may know the whereabouts of Booker and a way out. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And something about the assassin. Right. So what I'm thinking is we should stop and well, I'll, now we need we need to stop and look because if if uh, Booker's in trouble. We go, we find Jonas, he says, yeah, he's still in his own. And somebody comes and drags him out of here and, and offs him. Could have missed our chance. We need to do a brief look. I know there's someone out there. But I'd be damned if we let someone die and we could have looked. All right, I'll bang on the pop. I'll stand back up with my pistols. We got you as best as we can, boss. You can feel the heat. You can feel this, the beads of sweat building on your brow as you're here. This whole place, just it's, the fire is so large and burning. And so the fire is at least 15 feet high. 
It's just kindling and smoldering and smoking the air. <coughs> and as all the doors are open. Hundreds of books and bookcases and paintings of our works are being burnt. You know, my thought is if Edward. All the doors are open, yes. Is somewhere around here. He could be on that. She points at the fire. Just stating. You two. Go on ahead. Take a quick look. Alright. Um, I'll. I'll uh, follow behind them, but I'll, I'll take a moment to look at the fire to see if I can recognize any corpses. Well, you don't smell any burning corpses. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's a very particular smell. Um, it doesn't smell like barbecue. It doesn't smell like barbecue. <laughs> no, there's no, there's no one that's been burned. Long that, pig. Unless they were burned days ago. So, All right. keep come with us. Stay in the street. Keep an eye out. Warn you take the left side. I'll take the right side. Well, uh, no offense to either of you, but I might be better at uh, looking around. Fine, quietly. I'll stay, I'll stay in the sand. All right. So to clarify, Terwin is doing what? Terwin is staying in the center of the street. Okay. To keep an eye out for the other side, because I imagine these two are staying on the coach. Well, there right. are a number of roads that can kind of lead to here. There are five roads that lead in. <laughs> okay. It's a square, basically, is what he's trying to say. Yes. Ah, okay. There's a town square of sort. One side of the bonfire and the other side. Where a market would be, or Mm -hmm. where you would see book dealers and. Um, Looks like furniture. Terwin is going to basically direct the two of them to go in areas where he could keep an eye on both of them, Mm -hmm. and we're going to do a a sweep of the square. Okay. Well, so I don't think there's anybody here. All the doors are open. Terwin is doing that. So, Warren, what are you doing? So I'm going with Elisa, is that what you asked me to do? Opposite sides of the street is what he said. Yeah. Okay, okay, so I'll go on the other side of the street. Elisa? Yeah, uh, opposite side from him, checking the... So you want to sneak around on your own? Well, I'm going to be kind of within, like, their sight or his sight. Just well, so not if you're sneaking. Up. If you're true. sneaking around, you're sneaking around. So which do, do you wish to follow? No, she'll, she'll follow orders and she'll stay within view. Okay. But still searching. Okay. And Banneker? Uh, front shot. Okay. I'm staying up. I have to You're man the, the horses and, okay. and and hope yeah. to shoot if anything comes. Okay. And I'm just keeping an eye out from the puzzle gun. Okay. Like, so kind uh, of behind the, you know, I mean, yeah. I'll leave the gun stationed. He's taking that one in, yeah, I'm taking this one in. Okay. You I begin your that. sweep of this, this town square, so the three of you need to make awareness tests. Uh, these tests will be easy. Okay. 71. 69. 62. 36. Passes. 56. Success. Okay. You sweep through this place looking for whatever you could potentially find. And you managed to, as you could have, it's clear that all these buildings have been ransacked by the by the zealots or whoever serve alongside Inquisitor Evangeline. Um, the sound and the smell and the sight of the fire is a little bit unnerving. They could have been here through here very recently, but. They clearly made a choice to tear through these bookstores, uh, leave the doors open. They didn't burn the stores themselves. They just burned the, what was inside. Um, they did a haphazard job at best. Um, it's clearly, as you suspected, some sort of town square where a lot of books, other works of art are, are, are change hands. Um, and during this time, uh, you managed to find a a billing, a book of billings that has a show of addresses up on it, and using that you could probably find your way to Edward Booker's shop if you chose to do so. Oh, uh, yes. It, however, is not here. Okay. It's a little bit off the beaten path. As soon as we figure that out, I'll, I'll say, okay, everybody, let's go back to the coach, and then... When we go back to the coach, I'll approach uh, Banneker. 
Oh, uh, we figured out who, where the house is. The house is in that direction. So, we no, we no longer need to search this square. So well, that's a book. Give it to Lisa. She can take a look at it. Yeah, she's probably oh, she's, being navigated. It's a yeah. bu- literally a book of billings, as, as described. Yeah, 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 yeah. It has no other use, it's save not, for yeah. identification of a handful of addresses. This is not an educational book of any sort. So. Yeah. So There's nothing to extract from it. You, right. you got most of the clues with Okay, you, so. everyone load up. Yeah. Right. Let's go. I'm already in. All right. You so mount, everybody in? You mount back up. We know where we're going? Yeah. All right. And you follow, and you, uh, you follow the directions. You follow as best you can, at least. And the sound of the flames dies down. You're not nearby now. Instead, you come down this alleyway. Sail away, sail away. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. <laughs> like, 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 pipe, what are the pipe blues? <laughs> <laughs> God, I heard it too. The 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 coach comes to a slow crawl and then eventually to a stop. As fortunately, the nearby buildings block the blowing of the winter winds here, but the snow builds and drips in the alley, and it kind of and you come into this really really narrow alleyway. And if you go any further, you're going to get the coach stuck. It's going to get stuck between buildings. You need to disembark. Can't go any further. A pound. I'll start to. I'm gonna. Is it Kenny the horses? Kitty the horses? Kin? Kin? How do you say that when you make them back go backwards? Whatever that is, I'm gonna have to go backwards until I can turn around. Horse yeah. terms. So you're gonna back them out of the alley? Yeah. Okay. I believe they call that flipping a bitch. Flip a shitty. <laughs> yeah. Flip it. Yeah, I don't know what the Put it technical the term is, but we call it flip a shitty or it's a Kenny or something like that. We're gonna call him Pull a Kenny, because it just makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Why not? I can't remember the name of it. Right. I know. So, yeah. Sorry to any horse people listening or watching. Boss, we can't go any further. You guys want to hop out? And... Uh, they're yeah. called centaurs. Thank <laughs> you. <laughs> so, the, we pull a centaur. The, uh, <laughs> you you kitty the horses, and they slowly begin to kind of trot backwards, and the wagon's rumbling back and forth, and it's scraping against the sides of the alley until it comes into. A wider boulevard, and you stop. Can't go any right. further. Same thing as before. You two keep an eye out. We'll go take a look. All right. All right. Put the brake on, and so you've got view of the broad boulevard behind you. You've got view in the alley they disembark into, and they begin to walk through these drifts of snow in the alley. Crunch, crunch, crunch. Until the wind kind of whips back and forth, there's kind of kind of crystals, you know, kind of like the snow kind of whipping in your view, and it's, they look like gray shadows to you at this point. Kind of double in the alley. That's snow, but uh, there's just you see just kind of their gray shadows in the snow, just kind of whipping back and forth, and the wind whistles and tugs and pulls at your clothes in this alley. Warren pauses for a moment, looking toward the sky. And he hears these sounds in his head. Warren. Warren. Oh, hell, not again. Warren. 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 You're staring directly at him as he's looking up and not paying attention. Hey. You snap too. Huh? Who must speak of because yeah. that I mean he that's been the am, am I am I metagaming here or has he done that before like where you know he's, yeah. he's trailed you see him, dri- him trail off but you never see the switch okay you've never witnessed the switch okay never so witnessed. I would say no one has yeah, he just so came back and been a different okay that was ha- person the first yeah. time it happened the first time you even noticed was when you were in the undercroft right okay so that was a bit too much then all right um Hey, snap too. Hmm. Get your head in the game. Just. It's a tense moment here. Did you hear something? 
Uh, and when he says it's a tense moment, Terran draws his shield and his sword. <laughs> There's this door groaning against its hinges at the building down the road. As Elisa has the paper, the book in her hand, she points toward it. That must be the address. Oh. Well. The ominous door appears to be our place. I guess this is, I guess this is me. Stay right behind me. And I'll head in. Elisa yeah. levels her crossbow. Don't worry. You guys have a little plot armor in your advantage. Fate points? Plot. Yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> they are. Everybody so, knows. <laughs> the door to this shop is co- almost completely off of its hinges of being threatened to be drawn off from the wind. It depends on if the camera pans away from us. That's right. <laughs> Slowly pans in. As you all step toward the shop, we turn back toward the alley. Dun, dun, dun. I can't really. They're, they're going in a building. All right. At this point, <clears throat> you're watching toward the broad boulevard. You narrow your eyes for just a moment, and you can swear on a nearby road. You can see these oh, the shapes of these gray stallions drawing a stagecoach through the roads, and as quickly as you see it, it disappears behind buildings. Huh. Almost would have swore I saw another stagecoach back there. But, well, I don't know, maybe I'm just seeing things. I'll keep an eye out. The sound of the church bells mark it the twelfth hour. Boom. 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 You know, they peel through the city. I miss the Dorindle bell. Right, that's what I was just going to say. The dun, 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 dun. <laughs> that's how you know Dorindle's got class. Right. <laughs> I agree. I agree. I can't remember anything that the monk saying. Metallica, please don't oh, sue right. us. Right. <laughs> we really do like you guys, Lars. Yeah, Dorindle, the, Dorindle, the Dorindle bells are the dun, 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 dun. But, um. I don't know, Not this place just got recently the creep, so, uh... Well, let me give you the hint. Without horses, it can't move. True. So if it comes down to it... We'll just have to keep our eyes and ears open. Those are the shots we should take. The two of you are talking, you both jump at the sound as you, see, as you realize, through line of sight where you're at, that huge blazing fire tumbles. Everything was burning tumbles into your vision, and you can see it smoldering and burning further down the road Ooh. as that great pile of books and works of collapse as the fire's been burning violently uh, for about a half for, for God knows how long. Jump. I don't reckon why you would want to burn every book. Like, if it's, if it's heresy, I understand burning a book, but not everything can literally be Heresy. I don't understand burning books. Can't you learn from heresy? How do you know what heresy is if you don't know it? If you don't see it? Well, I mean, I, I know that a lot of priests will read the Libram to people because they don't they don't know their letters, right? Like I don't I don't know old old, and most of my 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 knowledge is you know from my father and from the other people in my family, but I mean. I don't reckon I remember any passages in there about, well, burning all knowledge. No. Again, all knowledge being forbidden. That's just ludicrous. It's, this is crazy. This is a, this right. needs to be stopped. I mean, I know I give the Lauronites a lot of shit, but in their truest form, they do a great service by, you know, keeping knowledge. It's just that they should be sharing it, I think. And I think these current ones in this age hoard it too much and keep it to themselves. I'd rather hoard it than burn it. <laughs> well, I think you should make knowledge available to everyone. I agree. I agree. I do. We turn back toward the shop. Looking from the outside from where the three of you are, you can look. You can see directly into the doorway. The whole place is trashed. You've yet to step inside. The shutters of the windows are closed. 
on both the first and second floor. <clears throat> I turn to the elf and I say, Elf, do you know any secrets? Secret, secret. I got a secret. I'll approach cautiously, but uh, okay. um, I'll be the first one to cross the threshold. And uh, Be careful. It's possible they're waiting for someone to come look at this place. He puts one foot in the threshold. <laughs> he turns <laughs> back. <laughs> How do you say this? Well, they could have left something for us. That's what I'm saying. I don't know about you, but I feel sorry for them if they did. You saying that, uh... That's an intermediate tear talking right there. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, I got 65 in combat now! No, no, no. Just kidding. <laughs> I'll kill them all! It's not Adam talking, that's terrible. Oh, I, know. <laughs> I know. I'm making uh, an in-joke, okay? okay. <laughs> uh, what, you saying... And he looks down. You can see that there are books littered all over the floor. Uh, shattered ink pots are everywhere. There's a nearby counter. If, if you want to go ahead of me and take a look, you can. But we need to see if there's a body up there, because if so, then we won't be looking for Booker no more. No, no, I, I, continue in. Just be very careful. All right, That's well, all I'm saying. I'll be looking for Booker. And then uh, he'll uh, step forward and now be like kind of once, once his back is turned to her, and be like... <laughs> there, you must gingerly step between the books lest you slip and bust your ass. Right. There are literally open books everywhere across the floor. <laughs> and you can see that they shattered ink pots, and there's like a sh number of shelves and the ink pots are shattered all over. There's a cash till that's Stroom. been turned, that's been already overturned, and there are copper and shell... There's, um, brass pennies and silver shillings spread everywhere uh, in these muddy and snowy boot prints. You can see on the counter uh, there are there's blood all over including a few teeth where someone's face was smashed against the edge of it still stuck in the wood. Fucking degenerates. Ain't nothing we can do about it now. True. Uh, so yeah, I'll just continue to look for a person. That's yeah. my primary. You all kind of look through the interior of this bookshop, and it must be Edward Booker's. Um, it has to be. Um, you intently search both the first, the first floor, and there are a number of mess bags all over. Um, What's a mess bag? A mess bag would be remnants, book remnants. They're left in bags that are probably to be repurposed for pulp. Oh, okay. okay. Uh, they have yet to be taken anywhere. They are marked with an official seal. Uh, to be used by perhaps the Lyceum or perhaps Kaltirian, however the Bookmakers Guild works or operates. More, and at least they're simply standing at the door at this point? No, I, I've walked, I've fallen behind. I was like, yeah, Lisa would slowly follow as well. Okay. Yeah, though, it's, it's, it's precarious walking in here. Imagine, like, the floor of your room is littered with books everywhere. Mm -hmm. Not she, closed, she would, but open everywhere, yeah. She would flip a couple over just to look at the titles and see if there seems to be anything of interest. There are no title books. These appear to be empty books Journals for the most part. Yeah. If she These finds any that have words. Oh, yeah. Well, you need to make a more intense search than that. Could I could I possibly scrutinize what appears to be in this room? I'm gonna scrutiny it. You sure can. Could I scrutiny? Uh, your test will be challenging. Okay. I have a sixty-two in scrutiny. Got that scrutiny. Sixty-two. Uh, is that ten? That is a ten. So uh, yeah, that passes. Okay. Mm. Well, as you all are searching the first floor, maybe it's just Elisa's curious nature. She walks up on the bookshelves and starts pulling books off until it's just kind of one of the books is false and this drawer kind of falls open like this, like almost like a mail slot. <laughs> And you can see it's like a it's like a drawer like inside this table, and there's a thin volume stuffed inside of it. Oh, uh, she's gonna look at it. The winds of winter are dead in here. Dead, dead, dead. 
<laughs> it's the winds of winter, finally. <laughs> yeah, right. It's finally here. Just kidding. He'll never be here. Thanks, George R. Martin. Um, Is it coming? Is it coming? This appears to be some sort of secret ledger. It is clearly, it is, this book is owned by Edward Booker. Bookbinder extraordinaire. 222 Third Age. And there are a number of entries placed within it. A number of entries. Which includes names, book titles, money that was paid for it. So you have found a clue. Mm. Uh, I'm going to look through this a bit while you guys clear the room because this could have some information that's useful. And I'm just going to say, George, you do you, man. <laughs> As you, you kind like. of finish sweeping through the first floor, you notice the, the back door of this place is wide open. Uh, so there's not a uh, second floor? There is. Okay. The, the creaky set of stairs that lead upstairs. Tightly wound stairwell. Imagine European stairwell to the second floor of a house. Mm. Oh, yeah. I have to imagine. You've been there, I know. So many of us have, right? Well, mm. Not yet. How do you while get the mattress up? While she's reading Man, that, how did they? While she's reading that, watch her back. Windows. Windows, yeah. Notice the back door's open. <laughs> Windows. <Seen it done. laughs> so, hang tight. I, I, said, uh, I said to Warren, while... While she's reading that, watch her back. Notice the back door's open. I'm gonna go upstairs. When you're done, come up. Alright. Warren heads over the door. Looks out. If there's nothing there, he'll just shut the latch it. There's no... The latch has been broken on the back door. Oh, okay. Okay, yeah. well, I'll jam it shut. You can begin to pull the door and you realize it's actually stuck. Uh, they've, the door's been... was bashed open on the inside. Oh, okay. Yeah. The so door no opened. The door went. The door is bashed open. Okay. It's been knocked off its hinges, basically. Yeah. It's hanging off its hinges. It's wide open. Is there any blood back there? <clears throat> While she's flipping through. I don't see any. Muddy boot prints at best. Roll survival test. This test will be routine. Okay. 69% chance to succeed. And there's an 8. Success. The snow and mud is still fresh and wet. They've been here recently. So they came through here pretty soon, pretty recently, maybe even today. The stairs are creaking as uh, Terwin makes his way up, but sense. we come back toward the alley. Dun, dun, dun. Back outside near Rusty. Rusty. My you can mind. feel the wind buffeting against you, and the smell of the fire kind of wafts down this way. The smoke is kind of obscures anything out that direction, so the chances to see that coach approach again would be impossible. But you hear these distant, kind of discombobulated voices, both of them, echoing somewhere. You're just not sure where it's originating from. Roll knees drop test. Both y'all. This test is gonna be secret. Knees drop. Alright, I normally have a 43. Alright, roll it. And a 16. 51. Now I got a 61, so. I felt. Well, it's clear that. Well, I don't know. Secret. Yeah, it, it, you're kind of, you're kind of, you want to keep that roll? Yeah, I'll keep my roll, yes. So you're both standing there trying to suss out where the sound is coming from, and and you're looking toward the front, you're looking behind, you're going to pop up on top of the stagecoach and stand up and get a perk into the air, Harper, and Harper pulls on your shoulder, Banneker, and he kind of points one direction, and he's pointing beyond the bookbinder shop. Meanwhile, up back at the bookbinder's shop, you come to the second floor, and it appears this too, Terrawin, has been ransacked. It's a nearby water closet. There's some things lying on the floor, a toppled bookshelf, a bed, and a uh, chamber that has been torn asunder, a chest that has been spilled, including this moth-eaten blanket. It's a wardrobe that's wide open with a number of heavy robes and clothes inside, including winter clothes. 
the glasses of the window have been shattered as you can feel the wind against your face. Nothing to be found <clears throat> on the second floor. Okay. Yeah, if there's no bodies or people, he doesn't care about any of the rest. He's going to go back downstairs. Okay. There's no one up there. Didn't really look for many things. There's not a person we need to leave. Continue to review the journal. He ain't here. He didn't get killed here. I mean, he took it with him. We could, we could look at it on the couch or later, right? Yes. Bring it with you. Just, uh, you said you think somebody's been here recently. She's a candlelight already lit from a nearby, uh, she's just lit a, sorry, she's lamped a, she's lit a rush, they call those rush lights? Yeah. Like a rush that's lit, dipped in candle wax and lit. She has a rush light burning right now, or she's looking through the book. Yeah, I immediately, when I noticed that she has that, I, I stamped it out and, what are you doing? I have to be able to read the body patrol in the streets. Because they won't notice me standing here. Alright. When you've been in the war, let me know. Let's go. You can hear sound coming from outside. Meanwhile, back at the coach, what are the two of you doing? What should we do? Should we call? The wind. I mean... We can give him a few more minutes, but I'm going to keep an eye out and ear out they're towards that fire. Them. What's that? Pointing right where they're at. I know they're there, but <coughs> don't mean they're necessarily hostile. We can assume it, but I ain't firing until provocated. Okay, I know. Yeah. All right, I think we should yell for him. They're gonna well, get don't caught. yell for them. Just go in there, get them, and leave the horses. Well, unless you want to drive up next to the door. I can't. <laughs> well, then yeah, you see that? I'll go if you want me to go. Just keep an ear out and don't leave us. All right. How far away are they? About a hundred yards, you said. They're down the alleyway. They're not close. If I leave you, you're gonna have to watch both sides. Can you do that? I'll I'll go. All right, you're you're the one that can drive this thing. I ain't gonna be able to get out of here. So I'll hop off. The stagecoach kind of swings back and forth, and you <laughs> fall into the snow. You gonna know, walk down there? Yeah, I'm gonna walk down there. Um, it's just the alleyway, right? So yeah. Um, do I notice if like the is the snow like amplifying my footsteps or like silencing them as I'm moving? silencing them? Oh, yeah. Then I will. Then I'll move faster. Yeah. Okay. So you're but jog you're like, down there. Yeah, I'm gonna jog okay. down there. You wink out the rush light back at the uh, back in Edward Booker's shop. All right, Edward Booker's not here, so we can take that. We learn something in better light. But what about the fresh footsteps out the back door? They're just coming through here. You hear a sound. Let's get moving. Hey. hey. Something's approaching quickly. Hey. Someone's approaching quickly. Yeah, I, hey. uh, I, I go towards the door, shield and sword drawn in hand. Back or front? Uh, front. Okay. Come to the front door and you can look around and you can see that Harper's gonna running toward you. We heard voices down that way. And then all he uh, points it's about time to run. He, he points over the building. The back alley. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Wow. Let's see if you can get away fast enough. <laughs> Everybody roll 1d10. Add your movements. Only if you're at the shop. Right, I'm not there. You must beat. You must beat. You must beat 16. Did anybody not beat 16? Elisa booked it. <laughs> Unfortunately, Five, you were not fast enough. I, the only reason I beat it is because my agility switched with the uh, <laughs> the new stats. There you go. <laughs> 16, that would be tough. Yeah, 16 is tough. Yeah, my movement's in mine. I have an eight. Well, it's movement plus a d10 
Yeah. Still. Still. You begin scampering down the alleyway, and as you're kind of making your way through the threshold, you can hear sound from inside Edward Booker's shop. There's someone inside. You kind of <laughs> panting, rushing, running toward the uh, toward the coach. They quickly swing up on top of it as the back of it still pointed down the alleyway. What is it? Oh, we need to go. What do you? Wait. What if it was? What if it was Booker? You want to roll them dice? Just point this gun down that alley. Already is. <laughs> I'm ready to go when the boss tells me. Be ready to go. We'll see if they come out the front. I mean, what if it's Booker? Do we? We don't even know. Sh- whatever, boss. Check. You want to make? It you really spot. think that All he's walking around here. this place? No, I and think. You tell me to shoot. I'll shoot. Well, if somebody chased him off and he lost them, he might come back to pick something up like this, and she holds the journal. Just saying. Yeah. Um, I am overwatching, if that's a thing <laughs> right now. You're watching down the alley. I'm watching Unfortunately, the other you don't have a clear view to the door because <clears throat> right. the alley kind of twists around. So you have a right. view of a nearby corner, right. but not to the door of Edward Booker's shop. Right. Uh, stay or go, boss. We gotta know. You gotta make a decision. Right. Eyes only. You seem to be pretty quick on your feet. Are you willing to, to go and check it out? I suppose, yeah. Let's go. You're gonna scamper down the alleyway? Yep. Roll a stealth test. This test is see a secret test tonight. Yeah. Secret a lot of secret tests. Yeah, a secret. yeah, I'll keep that. Um sixteen. And my stealth is a 45. Okay. You come to the edge where the alley twists, and you look around. You see snow coming from a nearby alley, almost blinding you. But you see (laughs) one, two, three figures emerge from Ever Booker's shop. You can't make out their faces, but you can make out their rough shapes. They stand outside the shop talking. One of them has a burning torch in hand. Can I hear what they're saying? <laughs> you. Eavesdrop. Roll a standard eavesdrop test. So I have a 52. Uh, I'm gonna re-roll. Yeah, re-roll well. Roll I highly endorse this. I highly endorse this as well. <laughs> Uh, so, I have shaken, not stirred. If I fail an eavesdrop test, uh, you may re-roll to generate a better result. Do nice. I get, can I use that again? Even well, though you I normally have re-roll. used that before you used the fortune. Yeah, That's I right. forgot about that. I was thinking this was flipped to succeed. Okay. Go ahead go ahead and roll. I was thinking this was flipped to succeed. Then yeah. You rolled twice like at this yeah, point, right. so this you failed both times, so if you're trying again, yeah. yep, it's same, same impact. Yep. Yep. Okay. Uh, on eight. Yeah, 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 yeah. there we go. Okay. Three rolls. You can see, you can hear, I should say, one of the people says, Humility. Have you found the smuggler yet? Chastity. Back to vehemence. Temperance. Patience. Find kindness. Find kindness. It's all a bunch of stupid names. Yeah. Insert religious cult name. <laughs> Here. Okay. Then it's just setting this way. She picks up at the end of the alley. The other one says. Who did they say was heading this way? Diligence. <laughs> Another cult name. Gosh, it doesn't kill these people. And she will, uh... Since it appears, when it appears that they've pretty much stopped talking, she'll slink back. Okay. You look silent as you go. <laughs> she comes back, her breath in front of her, breathing heavily. It's them. It's the Inquisitors. Alright, we can go. 
They haven't found him though. That's good. All right, Dufresne, roll out. Well, they said you they had the found sound. the smuggler. You hear something approaching from the nearby roads. The rumbling of wagon wheels, the winning and wickering of horses, and no more than just a stone's throw away emerges this huge black iron stagecoach. Mounted upon it, this heavy iron buckle gun, these four massive gray stallions, and this man with an iron cage over his head. Four more leading off the edge of the wagon with burning torches, another with a huge war flail, as these group of zealots emerge into the road <laughs> as they. <laughs> As they pull forward in front of you, you turn back down the alleyway and you can see a group of three other zealots walking on foot, one with a burning torch, the others wearing ragged clothes, all bearing some evil meal symbol upon them that evokes inquisitorial zealots. They all give pause as you pull the reins and you realize they've kind of pulled toward the alley where you're at. You're not, you're facing this way and they're facing this way. T-bone. You come basically to, you come to center. No more than maybe, I'd say probably about 15 yards away at best. And let's roll! You want to, you want to, you want to, you want to try to run into them with your coach? I want to try and get around them. Okay. All right. I want to try and make sure that my pumpkin gun is pointed towards their horses that we can kill. <laughs> so to swing it around. So we will do so in just a few short moments. Oh. Let's take a quick break. Okay. Pause for station. Da, da, da. <laughs> Pause for editing.
Let's be perfectly clear on what's happening. From where you're at, looking down the alley, which the back of your coach is pointed toward, there are precisely one, two, three of these religious nutters. <laughs> There's a Tootsie Pop full. That's right. Two, three. Crunch. If this goes in the next week, I'll bring some nutter butters. That way we have some religious nutter butters. Sounds good. In front of your stagecoach, there in your pointing toward them, they have come to a slow stop in almost a, in a parallel, 20 yards away. There is another stagecoach with a driver and two religious nutters hanging off the side. Bearing all manner of crazy looking weapons because they're religious nutters. And they've made no means at this point to attack, but certainly they don't, but they probably don't mean any good. So because Banneker shot first, Banneker always goes at the beginning of combat because he's a smuggler. What will you do? I'm gonna gun it. Okay. <laughs> Alright. So, you, uh, gun it. And gun it for 3 AP or 4? Well, I get to do it for 4 because I, everything I you, have. So, to clarify, I have Ghost Rider, which uh -huh. makes everything go down by 1 AP. Mm -hmm. So, I'm going for 4 AP. So, you're gonna gun it. So you're going to spend three, three action points and make an operate check to drive straight forward and then attempt to turn to get away. You're basically at gun it. So you're gonna you wanna try to so you basically wanna move up you're saying you wanna move away from them. Yeah. Okay. I mean, we're, we're here, here. Cool. they're here, yep. and the boulevard's here, right? So I'm That's just right. gonna gun the go, just go forward. Got it. Yeah, All right, make an operate check. This is a drive test. This test will be standard drive. Okay, that is a 61. And I need to re-roll that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, already. Already. And that is an 18. Okay, so it's success. What is the movement of the vehicle? The movement it's of on this vehicle no, 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 is 9. Get your sheet. Yeah. Get your sheet. So it should all be there. It's right there, too, but... Uh, nine plus BB. So what the hell is my BB now? I can't remember. So, so twelve the, times three. To, so to clarify, to pause 36. for a second, fill this out in its entirety. This should be your source of truth because this is what you will reference during vehicle combat. All right, nine plus three equals twelve. So, so thirty-six. Oh, you move thirty-six. Okay. Yeah. So that will put you. 16 yards away from them. As you, they are 20 yards away, and you're going 36 yards. The difference is 16 yards. Therefore, you blast past them, moving as you gun it, bearing past them. Almost your your character is almost rubbing you up against. I was going to go the opposite way. So there is no it. opposite way. These are tight. Oh. Once again, these are tightly wound roads. There's no going around because there's no square you're passing. Okay. You're not in the square yet. Um, so as you pass them through this T-bone, you kind of wheel your way around them and head along the path, just rolling past at this point, leaving them in your snowy dust. Okay. You turn back, and you can see that you lose sight immediately of those on foot. And you can see the coach kind of, kind of turn around and swivel toward you, and they realize what's happening. And these, these coaches look strikingly similar because it too is marked on the back of the coach like a, there's a big kind of radial on the back that looks like not a wheel but it looks like a spoked wheel and it says Coventry Palanquin mm. uh, up on the back mm. and now they're in your wake so that brings us to Elisa what will you do so your smuggler your, your, your shot first yep. is done 
and we'll keep this handy for the future too. So we have it on the initiative tracker. Cool. Yeah. So they're going to use my perception bonus for aiming the puckle gun. If that's so, does that take one of my AP or no? Uh, if you are operating the weapon, it will take three action points. So if you were going to use your perception bonus, it will be three AP. If you are going to fire the weapon, it will be three AP. Yeah. Okay, I'll use my perception bonus on it. Okay. All right. So you flip the cabin door open, you both stand up, and she grabs a hold of, or you kind of instruct her what to yeah. do. Yep. Do you have warfare? Drinks. Does she I do have not. warfare? She's not going to shoot. She doesn't going to aim. Doesn't matter. Well, that's what the book says. Does not matter. Okay. So, sure, sure. to clarify, real quickly, she is going to operate her range because she does not have a warfare skill. We may throw a chaos die into this. Sure. I'm fine with that. So, taking these two levers, she kind of <laughs> begins to lock it and scope it in to get to, to, to line up the shot. I'm going to help him. You're manning the weapon. Aiming it, yeah. Okay. And that brings us to Terwin. Okay, so in order for me to lend an assist die, is that going to cost one AP or three? It's going to be one. Okay, so I will uh, uh, draw my shield and sword and bank everything. So what do you... I don't understand what you mean by assist. Clarify. Uh, the action in combat that is called... What are you narratively doing to assist? Oh, well, uh, when it comes time, time to fire, I'm going to remind him that... Uh, he needs to account for arc. Got it. So having a sword and shield drawn inside the couch is not going to work. You do not have enough room. You need to be on the running board. You cannot draw a sword and shield and be inside this couch. Okay. So you want to step outside? Sure. Okay. So you move, you get up onto the outside of the coach, which mm -hmm. is 2 AP. Okay. Okay. So if you intend to assist on the shot, that last one. which is a reaction, remember, okay. it's a reaction, you must bank your AP. Okay. So this will probably be a little bit easier when we have a grid in place. This is still somewhat new to all of us, but trust me, this is the way it works. It's the spirit of the rules. You cannot draw a sword and weapon inside the coach. Think about it realistically. Totally yeah, think about it realistically here. Right. So you need to be on the running board outside, so you must disembark and stand on the running board, holding on the brass rail, to be prepared. That means you cannot use a shield. You okay. can use a sword. I will use my shield and not a sword. Okay, perfect. So, that brings us to the Great. nutters on foot. So you're not really sure what's going on back there, but you can see the wagon is not moved at all. They're just... they've stopped. They haven't caught up whatsoever yet. Warren, what will you do? Um, so... My only ranged weapon is two-handed, so that's not going to work. That's correct. You cannot use two-handed weapons on on a, on a, on a, on a vehicle. On that's a correct. Vehicle, right? So um, there's not really much I can do, so I'm just going to hold my action inside the carriage. Okay. So bank your AP? Yep. Okay. So remember, we're using rotating initiative, so banking AP is not on the table any longer. Right. Okay. So if you just, so sorry, waiting is on the table. Banking AP is the better choice. Okay, I'll bank the AP. Okay. So Banneker, it's back to you. You want to continue driving? What would uh, you like to do? You have your, you have your full your full gamut of actions you may take as a driver now. So yeah, I would just keep driving. Okay. So do you want to gun it? Do you just want to change speed? Because if you gun it, it requires an operate check. If you change speed, it requires a no test. It's just an action point of expenditure. Then I'll just do my full movement and change speed. Okay, so it's three AP then? Yeah. Okay. So. Oh, that... full, or just two, yeah. Two or three, it's up to you. You're, like, you're not going to have to turn any point anytime soon. Okay, so if I use three AP going straight forward, that's your full movement. So it'd be 36 again, is that right? That's right. Okay. Your movement is 36? Yes. The movement is 12 times. So, full movement it means the movement of the vehicle. A full movement of the vehicle. Well, then, yeah. Uh, should I gun it? Gun it. Sure. Three and eight. Go ahead and roll. Your test is routine. You have no right. media risk. So, that's a 70. 70. Oh 
no. Do you want to keep it? Even if you fail, you still move two times movement. Yeah. I'll fail. I'll just go okay. two times. So what's the total movement? Then? 24. 24. Okay, perfect. That now puts you at least, at least 50 yards away. Okay. Okay. Everybody roll initiative again. Okay. At least what'd you get? Thirteen. Okay. Harper? Fourteen. Okay. Got one up easy. Tara? Uh ten. Wait, did you not go? Yeah, I wasn't gonna do anything anyway. I wasn't gonna shoot. I'm sorry, Tara, what'd you get? My apologies. Ten. Yeah, okay. You didn't go, did you? No, it's fine. I was gonna shoot anyway. No reason to Warren? invoke them. Thirteen, basically. We can just get away clear. Banneker, what'd you get? Seventeen. Okay. Elisa and Warren, what's your perception bonus? Five. Seven. Okay. Okay. You're moving at this point. At, you're moving this. You're still kind of moving. You're kind of heading down the way. You're getting toward the square. And from your site where you're at, where you all are at, you can see that their wagon turns up on a dime and they disappear into the city. You come back toward the square where you can see the great burning bonfire. Okay, well, I'm going to st- At this point, you're not in combat. You don't see them at all. I'm going to head towards the docks because it's the way we were going to go until we did the book tour. Got the book tour. Look, my wheel. You leave the you leave the square behind you and continue the way toward the docks, and you're you feel confident at this point that you're heading the right direction. You feel really good about it. Really do. Plus, you can't shoot the gun backwards. No, you can't shoot it backwards. You can't shoot it forwards. forwards. It's forward to the sides, right? So you can Back. shoot backwards oh. and to the sides. Oh, okay. You can't shoot forward over the driver and the horses. Okay, okay. You're okay. shooting a 180 Sorry. degree angle behind you. I had, a, I had the wrong idea. All right. Yeah. Cool, cool, cool. No, that makes way more sense. <laughs> yeah. Ba boom! Fired everybody. That's right. So the snow is almost blinding here, it's whipping everywhere. And you get this really uneasy feeling. Uh, as you can see that, as you kind of head down this other road, this other kind of twisting, winding road um, in Almeron's gates, and you see this long, slow, twisting switchback hill that goes down. It was like a hill in San Francisco where it zips mm-hmm. back and forth. This kind of rolling, lolling cobblestone road winding its way down. You kind of come to a slow stop. And it must twist its way down at least ten times. Nine times. Mm. You'll need to use great caution to get down this, lest the coach go rolling down the hill. Okay. Do you want to take your time? Yep. Okay. So, roll a drive test for the first three switchbacks. This test is trivial. Trivial. It is a fail forward test. So failure does not necessarily mean failure. 34 is a success. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. 61 plus 30, right? Yeah. That's right. So you could. The wind is is push is pulling your clothes and pushing against you, and you can feel the coach going very very slowly down that switchback. And it, you look out the window and it's precariously steep as this winds down toward the docks, and that's where you see all the smoldering fires coming from. Large bonfires that you had spotted before. We're going to go back. Go. We did large now. Yeah. From here. Oh, yes. Oh. I think all the ships are burned. Sweet. <laughs> the next three set of switchbacks will be easy. 
Okay. Easy drive. That would be an 81. And uh, I maybe need to roll that, I'm sorry. O2. Success. The next three set of switchbacks. Fairly easy. And that's when. You look up toward where the switchback, where you came down originally, and you can see this horses and coach, stagecoach come to a crawling stop. You can see that the religious nutters are way, way up there. And they begin scrambling inside the coach. You can see that this swivel gun points directly down. But it doesn't quite have the angle because it can't twist right. down or twist. It doesn't angle up or down. It only right. swivels this way and that. And you can feel that something is something is not right about what's going on up there. You see that they open the, the back of the coach and they drop a wagon wheel on the ground and they're pulling some heavy barrel out as they kind of Roll it across the ground. One of them lifts the torch and screams something. You can't really hear because he's so far up there. And he takes the torch and puts it to the barrel. You have three switchbacks remaining. This test will be a routine drive test. Okay. That's a 71. And I need to re-roll that. Right. Rolling like Isn't that failure? Failure. Good. Sixteen. Good. Yeah. Sixteen. Good. Yeah. You come to the well, edge. I'm pretty sure the barrel bomb is not what we wanted to. You come to the bottom of the switchback, and that's when you can see these large bonfires burning all along this broad boulevard, where clearly ships would come into uh, would come into the off the jetties and be loaded and unloaded. And there are a number of ships moored up around here, but one in particular draws your eye. It's unmistakable. You remember it from almost a month and a half ago. It's Jonas Sparrow's skiff, The Last Wish. It's not far from here. And there are people crawling all over the docks as you come to the bottom of the switchbacks. Suddenly, this pitch goes spilling all across the. About, uh, I should roll for this. It's on the on the, on the fifth switchback. This black pitch spatters all over, and you see this torch spinning through the air. And so the pitch goes up in the, the air, it burns in the air. This barrel of tar is caught on fire, therefore eliminating your ability to get back up back up the hills at this point. The fanatics in the coach kind of stand or are at the top of the switchback. They have not moved. Down below where you're at, near the docks, near this broad cobbled boulevard where snow banks have built against nearby warehouses, not more than 20 yards away at best, you can see that there are people scrambling all across the last wish, tossing boxes into the river. Uh, Opening the door to the captain's quarters of this small skiff, you see one of them take the lantern off the front of it and smash it on the ground as they're literally tossing the entire skiff back this way and that. They don't seem to have noticed you yet. Now, puckle guns are one shot, one person, right? Well, I mean, I'm basically saying like are we going to risk beyond missing like destroying the boat if we fire the puckle gun that's what i'm getting at absolutely yeah um I mean, it's a war machine you can definitely do damage to a vehicle yeah okay <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Right. Uh -huh. yeah, so that is literally its intent yeah, it's intent yeah. is for vehicles right it is its intent right um we need to get on that boat. Jonah may still be in there. I'm 
mean, he's either on there or he's gone. They've not been able to find him, is what she said. That's what they said. They were still looking for the uh, smuggler, so I assume that would be him. And the other boats were being burnt, right? No. Oh, okay. No, uh, it appears that uh, they begin dragging things out of the warehouse to be burned. Okay. And it looks like, it, it does, and, and you get a closer look and you realize these aren't warehouses, they're printing shops. And there are, there are print, printing blocks and printing presses that have been drug out and are being set on fire in a, in a gross display. They've not set the warehouses on fire, they've set the printing presses themselves, they've drug them out. These huge wooden and metal apparatuses and covered them in black pitch and tar and have just literally lit them on fire. It's where the, these three great smoldering fires you saw before are coming from that, including all the papers burning to a crisp as kindling beneath of it. Boss, just let me run all these crazies over. We've got to jump on them. Do it. These people are on the boat. Right. To be clear. Ah, okay. Yeah. Uh, only Harper and Matthew are crazy enough to jump onto a boat. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> work you. <laughs> yeah. It worked the first episode. This will work the last episode. Right. Get as clo- get as close to what we've got the drop on them, and those with uh, those with guns or bows, take a shot. Okay. So All to right. be clear, already went well. you're, you're they are twenty violence. yards away. Not that sort of gun. Not this score gun. All right. Unless you unless you're sure, you won't hit that boat. I mean, that might be our only way out of the city. That's fine. I, I mean, I won't fire on the boat. That's fine. You fired on a person, but not the boat. So you're going to take the carriage up there, though? Before they notice us, yes. All right, I'll move up. So, to be clear, you want to basically bring the coach near the jetty mm-hmm. and then stop and That's then turn it around where you can have him post up? Or just simply pull up so everyone can disembark. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm going to turn around so he can post up. Okay. Yeah! You whip the reins, and you begin pulling forward, and immediately it gets their attention at this point. As you're coming toward, they can hear you rumbling that way. I mean, it's impossible not to see or hear right, at this right. point. Especially when you now that fire that's burning on the pitch on the switchback up the hill is pretty visible. Um, I figured we weren't going to get seen anyway. But. And and you kind of, as you're doing this, Banneker, as you got a 17, they have an 18, um, they stop tossing the boat. And they kind of begin to gather along the jetty, arming themselves with... A series of pretty vicious looking weapons and you pull you manage to pull the uh, the um, the coach around uh, but the back end the puckle gun toward them and that brings us to Harper's turn <sighs> let's see here you said there's no point in waiting anymore that's what he said so I wouldn't because generally I would want to wait for someone to try to like intimidate them or command them to leave. Yeah, but like it's your turn right now, Harper. Yeah. So I couldn't wait until further along in the turn. With them well, not on the boat. You can displace yourself as long as you act before Terowin or after Terowin. Okay. I'll. I'm gonna um, displace myself until after uh, Banneker. No, Cannot. I already went. Banneker already went. That's right. Went. So you... well, then I'll wait until Terowin goes. Okay. Yes. So Elisa, what do you want to do? Uh, I will go up near the puckle gun and help him aim. Okay. For the UV. Ward? I'm gonna fire my bow. Okay, it takes three people to operate the puckle gun. He's firing his bow. Bow. Okay. To I be clear. What saying, if we want to use the gun. Correct. Just as a reminder. So you've got you you are inside the coach. You cannot use your bow. You need to disembark. Okay. I'll do that. Okay, it's two action points unless you have a skill ranking coordination. Okay. Uh, two action points, then. Okay. At this point, Warren disembarks from the coach. He steps off into the snow, crunching beneath your feet. You have your bow. Mm-hmm. You can load it. Yes. One AP. Okay. <sighs> Ready for All right. Okay. Terwin? I guess I'll be helping shoot the gun. Okay. Bring us back to the top of initiative. All right. So then I fi- I'm firing? Do you want to fire? Yeah, because it costs all three AP to help fire the gun, right? Yep. Yeah. So we've lined it all up, and now it's bang time, right? Okay, so what are you going to take aim at? I'm going to fire one over the bow. No. 
<laughs> uh, over the bow of the, the ship? Yeah. yeah, but they're off the ship. Yeah, uh, they're on the jetty. They're on the jetty. Oh. Just I didn't know if we were in a warning shot and not words these guys. No, we're fucking killing these Excuse people. Excuse you. It's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm taking a push. Kill the here. crazies. That's the game. I, yeah, I wasn't playing around. Shots, no warning <laughs> words. Come on, let's go. Fine, <laughs> we'll shoot the guys. <laughs> All right. Ding, 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 crank. You lock it in. They're 20 yards away. Yep, so with a... Uh, Thanks to Elisa's help, that would be within short range. Okay. Because uh, it's times whatever her peanut right. butter is. Seven. And you're going to fire at 42. what? So 42. At who Life or what? Um, if there's one, since I do have warfare train, that looks like they would be the boss, one standing maybe a little bit ahead of the so, others. So to be clear, right? they are 20 yards away on the jetty off the cobbled road. They're on the wooden jetty out there that's... Adjacent to the boat. Blow the jetty up. Well, if we blow the jetty, we can knock them in the water too. Yeah, I've drowned them all. But I'm not there, so remember, I'm. You are. You can all talk. Absolutely. Oh. It's to be shoot, shoot one of them. All right. Bang. I'll just shoot, shoot all of them. <laughs> Can't shoot all of them. There's no. Except one of them. Okay. Uh, well, so that shot is trivial. Yeah. All right. Trivial warfare. All right. Be sure to count for Ock. And so I'll let an assist die. But All right. Oh, there's your assist. There it is. You didn't <laughs> count for Ark. Yeah. You didn't count. So, yeah, you didn't well, count I, for Ark. I didn't Here want to hit the main. I know, being silly. So, do you have a skill rank in warfare? Yes. Perfect. Okay. All right. So, trivial warfare is going to be a uh, 79. I'll take that 77 critical success. Oh no! Oh no! Critical success? What's so oh no about that? You did. Which is thanks to Terwin's assist, because I used the arc. Right. Nope. <laughs> Didn't use the arc. <laughs> so. It's a really long table, guys. Here's, yeah. here's what happens there is a single shot. Bang. That's all right. A single shot uh, of the puckle gun, and it echoes everywhere down here as a whole. The whole uh, coach just kind of shudders backwards. Ooh, ooh. Roll damage. Uh, I'm gonna need 66 here, guys. <laughs> Actually, I got 66 here. 66. What? Oh, we got a lot of ones, but those explode because it's a gunpowder weapon. All right. So, you. what's that for you? Yeah. No, just gunpowder in general. Gunpowder in general, one or oh, six. Okay. So yeah. twenty-one. Okay. So we got twenty-one so far. Okay. Uh, plus five. So twenty-six. Uh, plus three, twenty-eight. 29. Plus seven. Twenty-nine. Twenty-nine. Oh, sorry. And then plus your seven. Thirty-six. Oh, Thirty-six. Bang. How much? 36. Okay. Uh, that moved him down four steps. <laughs> so, one of the fanatics, the religious nutters, is literally hewn into pieces. Boom! You see limbs fly all over uh, as the body is given to such great force behind the shot that it ends up halfway out in the river and you lose sight of it. As it's just gone in this visceral display of blood and bone and iron and gun smoke as you murder this person where they stand. The fanatics look toward them. They look toward the hill, look toward you, and you hear say, Rush the gun! And they pick up their weapons and begin storming forward. And we will stop here for the night. And that, my friends, was the Baroness. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. That's what I named the gun. <laughs> the Baroness. So I will mark one of those fanatics dead. Yeah, I was like, surely they did enough to hit it past four thresholds. And yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> if thirty plus damage so, doesn't kill some. One hundred reward points. Uh, so let's let's clear up some rules questions here. Sure, I sure. feel that there's some. I feel that I don't think we all have a clear understanding right. of the spirit of the rules. The spirit of rules is this. Okay. If there are people operating a trebuchet, they are all 
operating the trebuchet right, if right. you're taking advantage of their ability to for distance right. for loading for firing so i would say uh to be clear when you load it is three action points to right. load the weapon if you are going to aim the weapon taking advantage of elise's perception bonus she must be aiming for three action points. Right. If you intend to fire, you are the one taking. You are the one doing right. that. If your intention is to help load, then you as well need to spend those action points. You simply can't. In other words, it doesn't. It's like sixteen people do their work and walk away. Sixteen people do their work to use the weapon. So, for all intent and purposes, moving forward. For perfect and total clarity and sake of ease, yeah, yeah. if you're going to use a war machine, it requires everyone to be engaged with that war machine, spending an appropriate number of action points. If you are, in, if, because it requires a crew of three, that is its minimum crew required to fire it. So that is the balance. Yep. That's the intent of the rules. Right. It may not be clear in there, yeah. but that is the intent of the rules. So if right. you are using a war machine, it requires what's the What's a what's a demi culvert require? Three, three people. Three people have to operate that damn thing. Even if you're not rolling dice, it's three people on the war machine at all times as it's being used. The point where somebody peels away, done. Right. Can't use it. Rubicon requires six. Punk gun is three. Powder keg is one. Powder barrel is two. Mm -hmm. Demi cauldron is three. And then battering ram is six. That's right. So, like as an example, yeah. six people are arming a battering ram. You're not also attacking at the same time. You're right. arming the battering ram. So right. the same is for any war machine. It is literally war machine, not right. weapon. So once again, to be clear, if you're going to use war machines, you must all be on that war machine and engage you. But if you're not rolling dice, yeah. that's the spirit that's the yeah. spirit and intent of the rules. Right. That's the way I'm ruling it. That's the way it's going like to be. It. No fans or butts. That's the way it's supposed to be. Yeah. No, it totally makes yeah. sense. So, so that that, that way, about, yeah, that way we can we can be perfectly clear yeah. moving forward. There's no confusion when you're like, but no. I should do this or I should do that. No, you can't. You're using the war machine. I don't care if you're rolling dice or not. You must be on the war machine. You had me because I, I, I said so. So <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and it's because literally in the rules. It's yeah. literally there. So yeah. it's not no, it's not yeah. just a DM fiat. It's a spirit and intent of the rules, and it's in the rules. That's the intent. That's the way it works. Yeah. Right. So it it's wasn't the same. that that we were talking well, about. Well, it's the it was that one could use perception as the rules say. One can use right. Well, it does one say which, which, in the rules, we, which we clarified too, right. because it was using her perception. Right, and then right. that's what yeah. I was good with. Well, I mean, well, technically, we wouldn't even be able to use this because we don't have three people that have warfare. And it does say skill. All war machines require the use of the war bill scare, skill to operate. So. I mean, unless well, look, back up. So does say that again. So all war machines require the use of the warfare skill to operate. So pause. So unless yeah. it indicates at least one skill rank, like it does with heal tests, mm -hmm. like for you just have to you just have have to be able to use the warfare skill. So as an example, let's say you decide like I'm not going to fire this time. Let's let Elisa. Elisa would use a warfare test to operate. Okay. That's fair. Yeah. <laughs> it'll, it'll, it'll always indicate okay. the rules. It'll say like is it because there's only a few a handful of things in the book okay. that say you must have at least one skill rank in X okay, to so, operate. So you don't need the skill warfare that's trained. That's right. You would use it if you used it. That's right. That's that right. Sense. Yeah. It's a. Okay. It's a. And it's a. You, here it's is not a flip to fail. For her, it's a flip to fail. That's yeah. right. That's, that's why. That's, that's why Harper should fire. I have two ranks. One ranks. No yeah. ranks. Right. It's best I mean, for me to they, use it. I can't even think of the last time anyone's ever operated a war machine. We've never used one. Have Until we? I mean, we and shot one at the guys. That's right. Were, Oh, that's right. Spot. That's it. That's right. The that's mountain people. The ones. Yeah, the mountain folk. Otherwise, right. we haven't yeah. used a war machine until shot. we <laughs> yeah. were taking. Is, is, and if you, and if you recall during that during that time, you had Krung Bigley and Sammy Newhouse on the gun with them. Yeah. So there was three people present. Oh, it was me, him, and Sam. <clears throat> that's right. That's yeah, right. There's yeah. three. Right. We yes. used my perception at that time. That's right. That's why I was like, I'm confused because the way yeah. you played yeah. it last it, time was we yeah. did. It doesn't come up a lot, but it's cool that it did. That's right. <laughs> right. That's right. So that yeah, that's the intent. That's the oh. way it's used. Yeah. It's the way yeah. it's intended to be used. So oh, we'll man. need to remember that moving forward. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you got a war machine. No, yeah. And glad. you got two shots left. <laughs> I got two shots left, motherfuckers. <laughs> how many how many people were there? Could we tell like a rough estimate? Uh no, because nobody take them took a moment to spend any action points to account for it. Yeah. That's game. Yeah. Yeah. A lot. I know one of them is dead. Yeah. Well, I will tell you this. In advance of the next game, 
They're all lightly wounded. <laughs> yeah. Was it shrapnel from the? But you can't guess why. <laughs> Not because of the shot. Was it bone fragments? Oh, I, I know. I know exactly. I know exactly. Yeah. exactly. They're doomsayers. Great. Beating themselves. Yeah. Is great. They're already in a frenzy. Yeah. And, uh, oh, I think all of us got Ooh. an order. Did anyone need any corruption? I don't okay. think we had any corruption. Any corruption for blowing that guy to pieces? He sounds so disappointed. <laughs> um, I think these guys are evil yeah. enough that we're okay with that. <laughs> I'm probably gonna get another fate point three. And I'm, I'm just glad I don't have the uh, <laughs> amount, amount of sharpshooter. Like I'm at because uh, they have a problem with like shooting six like, semi order people. or chaos. <laughs> but are they that? innocent? I don't think so. They're not innocent. They, they don't seem to be good people. No, no, they have completely ransacked up. They're just misunderstood. Yeah. Ah, sure, uh, crazy. I apologize. I apologize. Oh, so, no corruption tonight. Everyone gets a, <coughs> an order rank. We'll continue next week with Queen of Members. We'll do a long session next week, I think, too. Yeah. This is episode 54. Next week. Oh my gosh, that's right. Jeez. We've been playing forever. It's good so, hopefully, next that. week we'll have, uh, maybe we'll have a new player. Yeah, and I'm I'm, I'm off early next week because what? of all the bullshit nice. that I put in these. <laughs> oh, last I bet. Few weeks, yeah, so. good. Yeah, I got a half day, so I could be over at a decent time yeah. for once. And if nice. you and if you guys want to come over early, I'm off. I'm taking off most of next week, so feel free to drop by early if you want. We can go through game rules. We can go through character improvement stuff. We can bitch and becker about what's written versus what the intent. Is. How long? I don't care. How um, long would it take me to take this gun off with me? Because I want to keep this thing forever. So you you can't. <laughs> That's a good question. Um, in fact, I think there is. How many? It has the. It, it has. I don't think it, has, it doesn't have the brace quality, uh, but it cannot be used individually. This is war machine. Right. Um, the same way that you can't use a ballista. Right. But you may say like, okay, spirit of rule says sure you can carry a fucking battering ram, but you can't carry it by yourself, right? It weighs like. I want to build a cart. Lot of I want to build a battle right. cart, like just so, right. you know. Like, we have a battle cart. You know what? Taking a, this with us. What are you talking about? This is, nice. this is rusty. The battle cart. There's so this many libraries here. We just need a library cart that they use for the books. So we put the puckle gun on. <laughs> <laughs> the library. We need a yeah, wheelbarrow. Right. That kickback oh. would knock you back. And then right. we'll call it the librarian instead. I was going to say call it the Dewey Decimal System. Yeah. <laughs> Dewey. Dewey. Decimate system. Duly decimated system. Decimated the dually decimated system. I, I appreciate I that you hate call, you, Mike. I appreciate that you call the, the puckle gun the Baroness. The Baroness. Because <laughs> she'll fuck you in the ass. <laughs> <laughs> just, <laughs> just, from just, the just, painting. From the wood. Yeah, 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 yeah. The, the wood <laughs> That right. was, yeah. Right. yeah. All right, Here. see you next week. See ya. Bye. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye. I'm all looking back.